Welcome to the Historic District Commission. Um, first off, I'm going to read uh, our script for remotely conducted meetings. As a preliminary matter, this is Ray Paul, Chairman of the Nantucket Historic District Commission, to permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Uh, members, when I call your names, please respond in the affirmative. Val Oliver. Aye. Thank you. Here. Diane Coombs. Says so she's connecting to audio. Okay, let's try Jesse Dutra. Jesse. Unmute, please. Carrie Thorne. Aye. Aye. Okay. Oh, that was Jesse. Uh, Stephen Welch. Here. Okay, back to you, Diane. She's still connecting. Okay. Diane is here, uh, and this is Ray Paul for the record. Um, staff, when I call your names, please respond in the affirmative. Kathy Flynn. Present. Holly Vakis. Present. Thank you. Anticipated speakers will be announced uh, when they appear. Good afternoon. This open meeting of the Nantucket Historic District Commission is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of COVID-19. In order to mitigate the transmission of COVID-19, we've been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. This order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public comment. For this meeting, the Nantucket Historic District Commission is convening by video conference via Zoom app as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that all attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and to take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. The public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless the chair notes otherwise. So we're now turning to the first item on the agenda, but before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. The chair will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. And further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. And please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in a conversation with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Finally, each vote taken at this meeting will be conducted via roll call. So the first item on our agenda for the day is to approve the actual agenda. So may I have a motion on Mr. that agenda? Mr. Chair. Oh, did I just hear someone? Yes, it was Kathy. Um, you need to amend the agenda. Um, remind me how, is that with respect to the old oh, business stuff? Yeah, yes. And were we to move items one and two on old business to uh, the beginning of new business? Is that yes, due, due to the time sensitive nature of the application. Correct. May I have a motion for that? I make a motion. Motion to approve. Well, actually, okay. <laughs> so what we're making a motion to do is to take items one and two. 
Who? On the, the old end. business agenda and move them up to the beginning of new business. New business. With, yes. And we're doing that in case we don't get through new business tonight. This is a very time sensitive thing. If we don't actually vote on it, uh, there's buildings that will have to go to the dump and we'd rather not do that. So. Um, Diane, can you amend your motion to be move items one and two on old business to the beginning of our new business agenda? Could that be your motion? Yes, that's what I changed. It to. Okay, thank you for that motion, yes. Diane. On that's that motion, motion. Oh, oh, by the way, folks, we have six members, three of whom are associate members. So we're going to do a little bit of a rotation tonight, at least for the portions that don't already have uh, uh, members sitting. So uh, let's just go Jesse and Carrie on this motion. Okay. So on Diane's motion, Val. Aye. Thank you, Jesse. Aye. Aye. Thank you, Carrie. Aye. All right, Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. What, Diane, now can you make a motion to approve that modified agenda? And we can do the same. Yes, I make a motion to approve the modified agenda. Thank you very much. On that motion, Val. Aye. Jesse. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. Ray Pohl, aye. Um, okay, so now we have a modified agenda. The, well, let's just quickly check in and see, is there anything that's been emailed as public comment that I should know about before we continue to consent? No, Mr. Chair. No, okay. So then we're gonna move along to our consent agenda. Now the rotation will be uh, Carrie, well, actually, let's see who needs to recuse from this and that might determine who our board is. So Val yeah, needs to I recuse. Need to. We uh, have Harry there. needs to recuse. Yep. I believe that's it. Okay. So with Val and Carrie out, the board on this, on the consent agenda, will be myself, Diane, Jesse, and Stephen. Okay. So. Okay. Can one of those participating members make a motion to approve tonight's consent agenda? I make a motion to approve the consent agenda one through 16. Thank you very much, Diane. On that motion, Jesse. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. Okay, Diane. Aye. Thank you, and I'm in favor, so that motion carries. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to make the record shown that Miss Abby Camp is here. Oh, okay, very good. Abby Camp has joined our ranks. So, hi, Abby. Hi, sorry I'm late. Um, that's okay, we just did consent, and now we're on to consent with conditions. So three, re no, actually four regular members, including myself, so that means that, uh, on any items that don't already have a board, we'll choose one of the three alternates. Um, so in this case, let's see, Carrie, you just recused. So why don't you sit on this one? So this is consent with conditions, uh, regular board plus Carrie. Can we have a motion? Make a motion to approve one, two, and three on consent with conditions. Thank you very much, Diane. On that motion, Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. So that's consent and consent with conditions. Now we're along to new business. Actually, we're now along to our old business, these first two items, which uh, have established boards, by the way. Let's see how we're doing on the board. So myself, Diane, Val, Stephen, and Carrie are sitting on this and we're all present so we can all attend. So just to be clear, folks, we are on 59 South Shore Road. These, as you can, as you voting members recall, are the move of those two uh, sort of barn-like structures from Westmore Farm 
over to this site on South Shore Road. Linda, are you around? I'm here mm -hmm. after five hours of planning board last night. <laughs> well, you can stick around for four and a half more of the HCC. <laughs> no. Like okay, so um, Linda, why don't you do it? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let you speak. Um, I sent everybody the pictures, um, better site plan and a large site plan so you could actually see the setbacks. We did move it over five feet. Um, and it's still 470 feet off of um, South Shore Road. So I figured I'd mark the horse barn and then uh, a couple of the other guys out there. There are four or five barns within 300 feet of us. Okay. And that's pretty much it at the moment. Okay, thanks, Linda. Um, and as I should ask, is there anyone to speak in opposition to this? There was a, a neighbor last time. I wonder if they're still on. Um, Mr. Chair, I don't believe they know it's moved up. So I'm trying to get a hold of him right now. I'll start if you like. Yeah. Uh, wow. Hmm. Yeah. This 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 is not good because this would be a, a, a violation right. of, of due process if we proceeded if there was somebody who intended on right. um, speaking and was unable to. So oh boy. Would you like me to email him and then maybe? Yeah, I mean, um, I, mean I don't want to move forward without him. Right. Okay. So, email and uh, do you have a phone for him? Um, I will try to get one. All right, because I because I'm going to hold. Unfortunately, kids, I'm going to hold these two. I know I moved them to the front of the agenda, but I'm going to hold them to make sure that either he, the neighbor, has a chance to speak or that he says it's good to good to go without him. Um, but I wanna hear back one way or another. Sorry, Linda. So now we're gonna hold those first two things that are on old business. And we're gonna, now we'll return to um, our new business agenda and we'll get back on Linda, I promise you as soon as, as soon as we hear one way or another from the neighbor, okay? Linda, I think you're muted, but I just, I'm hoping that you're nodding yes to that. Okay, so first up on new business is uh, 28 Prospect. Brooke, are you on board? I am. Okay. I have a difficulty hearing everyone tonight. I wonder why, I mean, I'll just turn How's it How's this, is that better? It's much better, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, 28 Prospect, lot 20. It just my computer finally failed. <laughs> okay, well, Linda, you 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 missed the fact that the neighbor is not not on. So okay. Kathy is get trying to get in touch with him to see whether he wants to say anything or whether uh, he's not going to say anything. So we're gonna wait to hear back from him. Okay. Uh, okay, I didn't know we did that, but that's all right. Well, well, you went out of order. You went out of order, and he's probably thinking it's towards the end of the agenda. So I don't. Yeah. Want to, I don't want to. Uh, that makes that. sense. Okay, uh, but but listen, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So I have now, his email, Mr. Chairman. I have his email. If you want me to send that to Kathy, go ahead. Well, Kathy already sent him an email, I believe. Oh, okay. But now listen. So we're on twenty-eight up. prospect, everybody. Okay, so we have the regular board. Let's do a rotation. So Jesse, you're first on my list of associates. So we're going to start with you. Okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Okay. Brooke, go ahead. Um, all right. So this structure is a one story structure that was approved for demolition or move off uh, from uh, 119 Eel Point Road. Uh, the lot is in between the, um, uh, the building at 38 um, Prospect Street and uh, let's see, it's um, the, the, uh, the, the medieval styled building. It's right next door to that, to the left. And it's part of the new subdivision. And if uh, I can scroll down. You can see the land court plan, and that's the red uh, red line. Okay. Um, 
so it faces on a prospect. Yeah. Oh, so this is not part of that new subdivision. Well, it, it is. It is. It is. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's just not fronting on North Mill Street. Okay. Correct. So let's take, uh, you know, I, I think that we received uh, some letters from neighbors on this. Uh, well, can we, can we slow down a little bit there? Yeah, scroll back for the, that's the building right there. That's the building. Yeah. Where is this now? Uh, 119 Eel Point Road. Huh, okay. And Brooke, yes. while we're looking at the, oh, it said this side faces street. So the side that has this sort of arbor sticking out, that's the side that would face prospect? Correct, but the arbor pergola goes away and yeah. all the decking goes away. Um, and we're also adding a, a simple portico facing the street, um, more or less in that, uh, you know, where that pergola would lead uh, on the building. Okay, so let's continue. So there's the other views of the same building. And these are just photos to kind of give you an idea of the location, like where it is relative to other structures on Prospect Street. Okay, good. That's Fraker's house right there, yep. Okay. And that's the portico that you're adding, that little thing. All right. Yeah. Um, yeah, um, right there. Okay, fine. That's, that's what faces the street. Yep. Okay. Got it. Mr. Chair. Yes. I do have HSAB comments. Uh, in addition to, you've probably seen uh, a few emails throughout the week um, from abutters concerning this. As right. Well. Uh, could you just read them? I, I think one had to do with um, there being no muttons in these windows. But uh, let's hear HSAB and then let's hear the 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 uh, abutters. Okay. So HSAB understands their their reuse, um, but doesn't fit in with the old historic district. Um, this type of uh, structure does not belong in the old historic district and rightfully so um, staff, we also uh, appreciate the reuse of this dwelling, but it doesn't fit in with this type of um, this area of the old historic district as a use of, of infill. Um, in the packet, we have received multiple emails uh, from abutters uh, regarding both 28 and 38. I've got one on your screen. Um, hi, Kathy and Holly. As homeowners at 26 Prospect Street, we are ready to express support and agreement with the concerns being expressed by Joan Taylor, who I know is on the um, Zoom right now, in relation to 28 Prospect Street uh, move on, specifically regarding the existing structure that is being moved, um, being compliant with the, the historic district guidelines for our district. Uh, this is from the Woodmans. Okay. And then we have, this one's from... Mr. Poor and Ms. Billman, uh, dear Ms. Flynn, as an abutter to 28 Prospect, we would like to express our strong support for the issues and concerns expressed by our neighbor, Joan Taylor. We wish to preserve the character of the neighborhood by ensuring that whatever is built or moved to the site respects the historic architecture of the surrounding built environment. Certainly swimming pools should not be allowed. We understand that there's no longer part of the proposal. Our family has owned our property, 17 Mill Street for over 60 years. It was built in 1804 and our family our fifth owners. We appreciate the wish to maintain a unique historic nature of this neighborhood. The neighbors take great pride in knowing we contributed with the Nantucket Land Bank to preserve the parcel known as the Ham Pony Farm, as well as the garden by the sea as open space, creating a unique village green atmosphere within the historic district, complemented by the adjacent hilly topography. We are very concerned that the design of the as-built house that is being proposed to be moved to 28 Prospect Street parcel is not at all in keeping with the existing houses. We support any efforts to maintain the character of this special neighborhood. And then from Ms. Um, Taylor, would you like me to read this one for the record as well? Um, well, actually, Ms. Taylor, would you like to speak? And you're welcome to read your own letter or have any other comments that you like to 
give us? Uh, I'd be glad to speak. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you just fine. Thanks. Okay. Uh, my husband, William Wilmot's here. Um, just a little history. We um, uh, purchased our home here uh, after many, many years of coming to Nantucket. I started when I was 10 years old. I'm not telling you how old I am now. Uh, but he worked at the Opera House. So we have a little history on Nantucket. Love it, really respect historic structures. Don't pretend to have all the knowledge that you have on the HDC. Uh, but we were fortunate to move to this neighborhood in 2006. And um, I provided a larger site plan um, to give the HDC commissioners um, a better view of what this neighborhood is and the town square effect. Um, that site plan, there's, uh, I really, on the site plan that was provided, where it says we're rocky, it should say, this is the site plan provided by um, the petitioner, where it says we're rocky, it should say, um, pick, uh, pack and pine, which is the Denny family next to us, where it says Harrington, and we purchased in 2006, it should say Akshak LP which is our um, family partnership. And where it says tool, it should say Woodman. That's just to give you an idea of how close we are to 28 prospect, the structure and establish validity, I guess I would say. Um, the larger site plan also shows the Eleanor Ham Pony Park. And it shows uh, three of the five lots that, um, thanks to the generosity of the Mueller family who have been wonderful stewards of the land, uh, they lowered the price on these lots. There was a neighborhood initiative to raise the funds needed and to spearhead the land bank buying these. And that was done in 2017 and 2018. I think it speaks to um, the character of the people in the neighborhood. A lot of us spend a lot of time here. Um, and the result is, is that it's created a wonderful neighborhood atmosphere with an open uh, town square feel that has a lot of natural beauty and is surrounded by wonderfully maintained historic homes. Uh, my understanding is, is that while this application is put in by the Mueller's, it is a developer who's seeking to buy all of the eight to nine lots that are in the historic district. Now I will say the Mueller's have done a beautiful job of respecting the land and dividing this up. And I think I, I speak for the neighborhood when I say that our hope is that um, the, any developer that comes in um, is sensitive to the historic nature and also the topography of the neighborhood. And I wanna make two points. One is this sets a precedent for what can go in on all of these lots that are gathered around this beautiful open space in this historic ROH neighborhood. And number two, um, not only does it set a precedent, but um, it also is viewed from more than Prospect Street. It definitely is viewed from all the abutters, but as you drive down Mill Street from Pleasant Street, um, you see it across the Pony Park and across the Land Bank lots. So um, I, we trust the HDC to make the appropriate decisions. I will say I'm a veterinarian, not my area of expertise, but two things that definitely stuck out to me was the one over one windows which I haven't seen in the ROH. Um, and number two, um, there is a metal large fence. Now, previously this went in with a pool and I thank the developers for removing that from an RO ROH proposal. So maybe that's not even a consideration now, but I, I don't think it fits in with a beautiful wooden fences here. Um, we have provided a number of uh, photos because the abutter photo was not provided um, with the application. So we've provided a number of photos to try to give you a little more feel of the neighborhood for you to look at. Um, and I thank you for all your efforts. Hi. Th thank you for your comments. Uh, hi, John. Oh, I just, uh, I'm on the air. I'll tell you what that's Okay. Um, <laughs> noted. We'll, we'll get to you in a minute. Um, we have a board established on this one, uh, but, but welcome. Thank uh, you. Okay, so now I, th oh, by the way, is there anyone else who's uh, in the queue that would like to speak on this particular application? If so, unmute and let me know. Right. Otherwise I'll go to the board. 
Ray? Yes. It's Mickey. Can Mickey Rond? Yes. Oh, hi. Um, I don't see you, but go ahead, Mickey. Um, I'm just speaking for HSAB, and we reviewed this, as you already heard, and we feel that, as they've already said, this is rather un inappropriate for the um, the old historic district. Prospect is is got very historic homes around it, and this doesn't fit into that neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Thanks for underscoring that point, Mickey. Okay. Uh, Diane, was it this application or the one previous that you wanted to speak on? Well, this one? this one because of the barns, but this one I'll speak on if you'd like. Yeah, sure. I'm going to go turn my I light on. With that. Have, I agree with that. Have the one over one windows are totally uh, inappropriate. I think the building is inappropriate. It sits behind us. If you went around and took pictures of all the houses that surround that little corner from the pony field around and uh, up the to uh, Mill Street and all the rest. It is a very old established area that would be so sad to to interfere with. I the houses down the hill behind Marjorie Mill's house, you don't see so much, but you see them from down the bottom. And I think that we are in a position now these days to protect what we have and the areas that we have. It's very important. And this would be good out on the, I don't know, Hooper Farm Road or, or Milestone Road or somewhere, but not in the behind the old mill and that whole cluster of important HD old historic area. And I think that the house is, has been said, is totally inappropriate for the area that it wants to go facing Prospect Street. It's, that's my opinion. Thank you very much, Diane. Abby, how about you? Yeah, I agree with uh, what's been said in HSAP. I think it's, um, I, I realize that the other side of the street does have some single, you know, one story buildings, but that the other side of Prospect Street, it's like, I'm not going to say black and white, but it's like it's it's like um, a little more modern on the left as you're going away from the hospital, and on the right it's more historic, and this is where that is that is intended to go. So I think it's uh, it's it's out of place with the other buildings that directly abut it. Um, so I'm I'm uh, in agreement with what's been said. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, Val. Well, um, initially, I kind of thought this was okay, because it's, it's low lying, it's 19 feet tall, and it's just a basic, you know, house. Um, is it because of the width of this building that everyone's having a problem with it? Because um, they could modify they could take this house and and do something a little different to the front facade. And uh, if there's an egregious item like skylights or something, those could go. But I I need to understand a little bit more from my colleagues why this is inappropriate. Because in my mind, it isn't. Okay. Thank you, Val. Uh, Jesse. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm kind of with Val on this and, um, this is a, uh, uh, you know, unfortunately we're, we're putting a building in this empty space and, um, this building being as low and as small as it is, um, there could be something larger in its place. And I think if we work with what we have here, make some changes to the uh, this recycled building, 
it may be better off for the neighborhood versus seeing something come in brand new. Um, I agree with the one over ones. I, um, not sure what kind of condition those are in, but if it's not too much, maybe we could replace those certainly on the street side in the half moon window and maybe work on the entrance a little. Um, we might be able to get something out of this building um, and turn it into lemonade. Thank you. Thanks, Jesse. Uh, my view is, is that uh, I, I think that this building is inappropriate for its context. And I really do the, sort of use prospect as a line between uh, you know, sort of the core historic district, you know, the, the um, Mill Hill Road and, and the, the park down there and everything, all the buildings that surround or that are, that are in that area all share common traits. Now there's these sort of low buildings in there, that one that sits kind of up on the hill as you're driving along, uh, um, uh, Mill Hill Road, I believe it's called. And you look, uh, it's across the horse park. It's right. the one you see on the sort of rising up on the hill. That's sort of a low story and a half building. But, um, you know, this one, the one that's being moved, eh, yeah, you see a part portion of it there, you know, but there's more to the left of that picture, correct? That's that's the one, but so that still is a very sort of older, more <clears throat> excuse me, more historic looking building, uh, as are all of the buildings in that neighborhood, um, as opposed to the ones that are across the street on Prospect. So, if this stands even a chance of, uh, in my opinion, of of getting onto that site, that would need to make modification that, that would sort of turn it from what now appears to be a not unattractive, but sort of vintage 1960s uh, ranch style house. It would need a change in character so there was more uh, fitting with the historic, it's more historic neighbors. Those are my views on this one. So should we have a motion to do something with this? I have a motion to, to I don't know how it can be re have enough revisions to make it fit in. I would make a motion to deny be not being uh, complimentary to the surrounding neighborhood. Okay, so there's a motion on a table to deny. Um, <clears throat> I think I know where this is gonna go, but let's do the motion. So on Diane's motion to deny, Abby? Uh, aye. Okay. Val? No. Okay. Jesse? I'm not voting for that. Right. Jesse? Uh, I, I'm a no. I'd rather see Brooke try to. Yeah. And, and that's chance, where right? I am on this because I, I think rather than just simply close the door on this, uh, we should at least give him a chance to take our comments to heart and see whether there's anything that he can do that would make this acceptable in, in the old historic district. So can we try another motion on this? Motion, motion to approve revisions. Uh, revisions. Uh, okay, I'm gonna take Jesse's version of that. Okay, Val. Um, on Jesse's motion, Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. Abby. Aye. Jesse. Aye. And I'm in favor. So the motion was for revisions. Um, so that's that. Okay. Thank, thank, thank you. you, everyone. Uh, good luck, Brooke. Thank Mr. you. And, and okay, so now I understand that the neighbor over um, for the first two applications is now on the line. Is that correct? Yes. She's not at the uh, screen right now, but she's. I, um, Mr. Chairman, I spoke to Peter because I had his number. Okay. And Peter said that he said what he said, I said what I said, and we'll work it out once we get him in there. And he uh, had nothing further to add. And he said, go ahead. He knows they have to come in. 
Who has to he knows the buildings have to have to go in. Yeah. So okay. once they get in, he said, maybe we'll work it out. But he said, uh, he's already said his piece and he didn't have anything yes, else just, to Just to be clear, no one is on the line right now to speak in opposition to your project. Actually, that's a question for Kathy. Um, I'm asking him to move on mute right now. Hello, me? Yes. Yeah. Hi. So, um, can you see me? Oh yeah, there you are. Okay, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Yep. So, uh, yeah, so Linda and I spoke, there's been a lot of activity on the site uh, since the last meeting. It's the, the, um, the brush is dense in there. I mean, these poor guys, I th they thought they were in Vietnam, I think. Um, but it was tough getting through, but they put some stakes up, which I think is the, the peak of the building. Uh, Linda said to me when she called me just earlier that it has moved five feet uh, further away from my property. Uh, it's really kind of hard to visualize. I can see it pretty clear. I'm, I was just sitting in my porch and I'm looking at it. Uh, and, um, you know, my, the other buildings around this, this property, you know, are in a distance through the trees. So, uh, you know, the agreement I had, I said, Linda, I mean, first of all, I don't even know how you can visualize what it's going to look like with all that dense foliage in there. But once the lot is cleared, um, I would like to come in and say, all right, where actually is this building going in relation to the other one? And if there's any compromise that might be able to make to push it away from me a little further. She said she'd be willing to look at that. And she said that the owner would probably be willing to look at that as well. So, I mean, all I want to be here is a good neighbor. I mean, when I built, bought this house, it was, it is what it is. I put the garage out front and I put a pool shed out back. And I was very conscious of what those buildings would look like vis-a-vis -vis to my other neighbors. And I always cited them far enough away so they wouldn't object. That's all I'm trying to accomplish. I'm next door to me, and I'm confident that uh, if Linda and I can sit down and get in there once it's clear, we can come up with something that's going to make sense. Okay, thank you. So I think I may have, thanks for the comments. I think I may have mentioned this the last time. So part of our purview is actually the visibility from a public way, thus the height poles for the various buildings. Um, and then I think it's it's up to Linda and her clients to be neighborly because I'm sure that in terms of distance from your property or other neighbors for that matter, um, that uh, they hopefully have enough room there to be able to move things around so that you come away uh, not feeling like somebody's you know building right next to you. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, the board once again on this is uh, the board on both of these applications is myself, Diane, Val, Stephen, Welch, and Carrie Thornwell. So board members. Did you um, want me to make a presentation of any? Oh length? gosh, I'm sorry, Linda, go ahead. Yeah. My computer died in the middle of it. <laughs> um, it Peter's right. We did move it uh, five feet further away and the building is angled out. So it's a good <laughs> There's the puppy. It's uh, probably 30 feet at one end and 21 and a half feet at the other end. And, and these are where in the general direction where they're going, but we have to get them in there and figure out where they're going to end up. But that's where they're that's where they are right now. But um, obviously, once we get them in there, there may be some changes made and we'll be back at some point, probably. OK, but, but just um, right now, just to get them in there to be clear, Linda. And, and uh, for, this is also for the benefit of the neighbors. If we move to approve these relocated buildings, they're going to be approved in these locations. Yeah. You and know, if that, we change them, obviously we'll the be document back. we have in front of us. Yeah. Obviously, if we change this, the location after working it out, then we'll be back okay. again. Got it. Okay. Uh, board members. I'll start if you like. Thank you very much, Diane. Go ahead. I think that they, that you cannot see them. We tried to take pictures up from the sewer plant all around and it's impossible. I think moving it four feet or five feet away is a good thing to cut down the noise. And also, if my thoughts are right, Linda, isn't this barn going to be in the property to the uh, what east, north, northeast of Denny Dias's barn? It is actually south of Denny Dias's barn. If you look at the one that's on the screen right now, I marked their horse paddock. 
which is right next yeah. to us. And then that trip to right. Leona and it's, Doris and Diane and all those guys. Right. And and it fits in with the area well. This lease working barns down there. Then he's increased his and it's good. And I don't think there's any way you're going to see it or that it would be considered not a part of the landscape there. I th and uh, it would be very sad to lose those two barns because they're quite extraordinary. Mm -hmm. That's all. Okay. Thank you, Diane. How about you, Val? Mr. Chairman. Yes, John. I have a question. I, I, I know I was a few minutes late getting here. Yes. But uh, I, I just want to get squared away. He's not on them, is he? No. John? He, yes. You're not on these two applications, and, and I don't want to get into explaining, but we, we took okay. something out of order because it's time sensitive. But I okay. will tell you when you're going to be on the next application, okay? Uh, could you tell? So I can follow it. Could you just tell me what they are? You yes, okay. So right now we're reviewing, we're, we're, we are reviewing items one and two under old business. Old, old business. Old oh. business. And then we're going to return to new business as soon as we're finished with these two items, okay? Yeah, I guess I just wanna worry about it. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Val. Uh, is this the green one we're on? Uh, uh, both of them together, it's easier for you. It takes, saves time. Well, yeah. the green one, I don't have a problem with. The red one, I don't think even looks like a barn. It looks like it's an entertainment center. And it that to me isn't indicative of the area there is working barns there's no doubt about it and this green one i think fits the bill the red one i think is inappropriate if it can be seen at all okay so we we better be clear on given your comments val we better be clear on which one we're reviewing and it's not clear from the agenda so i'm going to say that right now what we're reviewing is the green barn okay yes. That's the first one. All right. So red will be next. So, but in terms of the green barn, you're okay. Yes. Okay. So thank you, Stephen. Yep, no comments. No comment. Okay, Carrie. I agree. It looks fine. All right. So this is on, then I could have a motion on the green barn. Motion to approve as submitted. Thank you. On that motion, Val. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Carrie. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Green Barn is approved. Now, okay, I can make a small presentation very quick on the Red Barn. It was probably less visible than the Green Barn because it's shorter. It's smaller, yeah. It's smaller, and we're only taking that one piece for the kids' playroom, for them to have birthday parties or whatever, but it's still 450 feet off the street not visible and it's lower than the other one and we're not going to we'll leave it red. At the red barn and then we'll take the pieces off that that you yeah, said so i marked them on the on the pictures but it's um it's not going to stay red guys it's going to go a little more subdued shall we say okay <laughs> there's actually a picture of it above that one yeah it's right. just that piece not the glass piece it's only from the the solid wall over Okay. And this is, um, it's at an angle to the street. So you're just going to see a gable in with a couple of windows if you see anything. Okay. I see what Val means. It's got this big monitor on top and everything. So it's not like the most typical building on Nantucket. Um, okay, thanks, uh, Linda. Board member, so Val, um, are you still where you were last time? Did yeah. Time? Yeah. Okay. How about you, Diane? I wouldn't count the, the part of the red barn, red building, whatever you want to call it, that has all the windows in it. It's just a little end. And it, uh, it's, it's quite simple. And if it's just the size of a child's playroom, I don't, I see no, uh, site plan or saying what the dimensions are, but it should be devoid of all the hoopla and just have it as planned, a very simple building tucked in there. And I really don't think you will see it, but 
if it's what they, has been proposed, I don't think it will be obnoxious. Okay, well, so. <laughs> That's uh, a good word. <laughs> Linda, Linda. Yep. You're gonna keep the monitor on top, right? That big. Yeah. But again, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be shingled actually when, after we get it in there, it's not gonna have red barn board. It's gonna be shingled. So it just kind of disappears. I want to make sure that that Diane is aware of what's staying and what's going. So, like that little row of windows. No, I didn't know the. Just this thing. That is staying. No, that's going with us. That's the only part going. That's the other side of those windows that you see on the other side. This is the other side. This will face into the lot and not the road. Okay, so that bank of windows. Uh, that's Holly, French doors. What? These are the French doors right here on the opposite side from those little windows you saw. Oh, is the, the porch side. is the porch staying? No, porch. I believe we have to take it off, obviously, but yeah. I assume we're taking it with us. The front of... wouldn't indicate a porch, so the porch is going. And then, how about the bank of windows that's on the opposite side? That's staying, right? That's staying. Chosen. We're right. going to try to keep them intact. Okay, so it's getting shingled. Uh, that's staying. The monitor that's on the ridge is staying. The, the link that back to the other building is going away. We're not taking that. No, I'm not taking the big barn. Uh, that's a big red barn, not taking it. Okay. So it's just this little piece here. All right, so hopefully everybody understands that. Stephen, what's your view? Uh, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chair. So with regards to visibility, no concerns. So that's section 9A under section 9B of the act. Uh, with respect to setting proximity to setbacks, context, um, I have no concerns. It's about 21 and a half feet off the property line and it's adjacent to the neighbor's pool. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Chair. Thank you. Carrie. Um, I think there are a lot of unusual barns that aren't so typical on this road. Um, I'm a little sad to know that it's going to be shingled because that will take away from any barn sort of quality that it has because it's really just a bunch of windows. Um, I don't mind it at all. It's a small little building. I don't think it's going to be seen, but I think it's too bad that it's going to be shingled. Well, but so interestingly, that. Carrie, um, I don't think that's actually part of the application right now. Not yet. It's not yet. I, I think that the application really is to get these off of their current site and onto this site and then they're going to figure out kind of what they're doing with them and come in with another application. Yeah, Absolutely. and I'm fine with that. I just think it shouldn't be shingled. Okay. Well, okay, that's we can have that discussion. Then. Okay. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, of course, Diane. Go ahead. No, just from this picture that's on the screen right now, there's a big tree with a with a plastic tape around it. What what is that? I think we're not involved with that. The new owner is, but there are several big trees up there that have tape around them. And I believe those are the hardwoods that are staying, not going. Oh. Okay, because it looks like it from the leaves that it was at Allen. Yeah, that's my understanding though. The ones that are marked and there's about 15 of them that are marked that they're not going anywhere, but I, I will check that just for your sake. Okay. Um, what do we want? Oh, and I'm okay with the move too. So should we set, put this to a vote? I make a motion to approve the red barn to be put down there. And uh, should we say, and as submitted. Yeah, as submitted, because as we, as I said a little earlier, they're going to be back in with, uh, you know, these ideas about reshingling and things like that. So we can take that up at a later date. They're really just trying to move these things right now. Yeah. Okay, so your, save, save your motion the was as submitted, correct, Diane? Yeah, yes, okay. it was that. All right, so on that motion, Val? No. Okay, Stephen? Yes. Thank you, uh, Carrie. Aye. Diane, on your motion. Aye. And I'm in favor, so that means motion carries. Four in favor, one opposed. Thank Just, you, everyone. Uh, 
Mr. Thank you, everybody. Mr. Chairman, if anybody would like to go in either one of these buildings before we start taking them apart, so you can actually see what how that post and beam works in there. It's amazing buildings. Just let me know, you know, text me or email me and I'll, I'll bring you guys in. They're not locked. Okay, thank you, Linda. Thanks, guys. Yeah, night, night, maybe. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now we're back. To and John, I hope you're listening in here because we're it's been confusing starting out. But uh, now we're back to our new business agenda. Okay, and we've already covered item number one on new business. So now we're going to go to item number two on new business. And believe it or not, folks, we actually have all the regular members. <laughs> we actually have all members in attendance tonight. It's a, it's a record. Um, so this, this is gonna be the regular board. Lauren, are you um, on board here? I am, good evening to the board. Hi, Lauren. Hi there. Um, so 81 South Shore Road, uh, tell us what you got going on. Sure, and I'd like to invite um, two representatives from SunPower, who is our developer. Um, we're partnering on this project. That would be Eric Stevens and Chris McCarthy. Okay. Um, so yes, uh, the town is before you tonight with two municipal solar projects that have taken quite a while uh, to get to this point in time. Our objective is to reduce our operating costs and taxpayer costs for uh, the town's electricity, um, to decrease our carbon footprint as an island and to increase local grid reliability and resiliency. So this is an application for a small roof mounted um, system on our wastewater treatment plant located at Surfside. This is the island's largest electricity user on the island. Um, the town was fortunate enough to receive a $200,000 grant in 2018. This is how long we've been working on this project, which would cover about 90% of the cost of this system mm -hmm. and would offset between six and 10% of the load or about uh, $30,000 a year. Um, so I am joined by SunPower, who is not only the developer, um, and installer, but they also are the manufacturer of the panel we hope to install, which is the highest efficiency panel on the market. So we realize we have a short footprint, um, a lot of grant money. So we really wanna get the best bang for our buck and try to offset some of the load at this site. So um, for any technical questions, uh, Chris and Eric are here to help me. Okay. Uh, what's the visibility from a public way on this? I can't imagine it's gonna be very, very much if any, oh, here we are, okay. Uh, okay, everybody, so there's there's the entrance in and or maybe that's the exit, uh, it, but it's on the far side of that building, as you can exactly. see. Exactly. All right, any other photos in there, Holly? Okay, that's good to know from the walking trails. All right, good. Mm-hmm. And then of course, between this roof plane and the beach are all the actual like sewer beds. I believe there's additional buildings and it's very industrial in nature, this site yeah. in both site and smell. Um, but yes, there are the yeah. sewer beds. There's between. other buildings there too. Okay, so I, I understand that you have these two people that are willing to answer technical questions, but I'd actually like to put this to, to the board uh, mainly to have a discussion about the visibility and the impact, which is what, what our purview is. So regular board members, do, would any of you care to speak first on this application? I'll go. Okay, thanks, Abby. I'm fine with it. Oh, okay, good. Uh, Val? Uh, actually, in this case, I think it's appropriate uh, in setting and um... You know, it's a flat roof and it goes from end to end, I hope. Uh, uh, in this in this instance, I have no problem with this application. Okay, thank you. Diane. I have no problem with it either. I think it's appropriate. It's part of our, our service area and I think it's 
fine. Great. And John? Yes. What do you think of this solar array out there in the... the, um, uh, well, the main thing I notice on the screen is, uh, I think you mentioned it, it, it can't be seen, but it's on town property, so it can be seen. I'm just making a point. Yeah. You know, it, well, it, that, that it, is it, true, John, if you drive up to where the sewer beds are, the actual beds themselves, and look back up, you right. you would see them. But I, I'm in favor of it. I think they need okay. it. Okay. All right. Well, I think we have liftoff then. If somebody could give me a motion on this one, that would be great. Make a motion to approve. Okay, go ahead, Diane. Yeah, Diane is making a motion. Approve as submitted, right, Diane? Yes. Okay. So D Diane's motion is to uh, approve as submitted. On that motion, Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. John. I already voted. No, no, you vote now, just say yes. Yes. Thank you, John. Um, and Diane? Yes. And Aye. I'm in favor, so that motion carries. Very good. Okay, now we're gonna do something out at uh, One Milestone Road, a ground array. Also, Lauren. Yes, and Name thank board. you. Thank you, Ford, for your, your vote um, on the last yes. application. So before us uh, now is um, a large scale ground mounted solar array at the town's water company, the Wires Valley property. Mm -hmm. um, we're proposing a 4.7 megawatt uh, DC solar um, field to be paired with energy storage. Um, again, this would result in millions of dollars of um, taxpayer uh, cost reductions for the town um, and would contribute quite significantly towards the island's grid reliability by integrating a battery at this specific location. Um, we are already, and, and I think I will have to <laughs> lean on Eric and Chris for assistance with this, uh, the site is not easy to permit. Um, there are active wells, um, so we're limited. And when we went out to procurement for where we could put solar on municipal facilities and properties, this is really what it came down to. The landfill is not ready. Um, no other site was appropriate. We looked at the airport, we looked at the schools, we looked at everything. And we see this site as um, there are, there are many on-site loads nearby the water company. We're trying to offset the costs to reduce ratepayer uh, expenses for water for the water. And um, we're proposing two sub arrays of solar and a battery. So happy to try to answer questions. Um, and we thank you for your consideration. So Lauren, yes. this, this uh, aerial photo that we're looking at right now. Yes. One and two, these areas of blue, are these those long sort of expanses of, of ground array, like something like we would see at the airport in Hyannis? Yes, those are uh, two subarrays of long arrays and panels. Right, so um, it's extensive. And can you speak to the sort of vegetated buffer that would be there? It's, it's kind of hard to tell from the site plan. Yeah, that was very uh, of interest and of concern to the Water Commission, um, but I may uh, toss the baton to Eric Stevens um, okay. to yep. help us with that. Hello, Chair and the rest of the Hi. committee. Um, yes, so what we are proposing here is um, we understand that optics and, and screening is very important uh, to preserve um, the integrity of the island here. Uh, so what we're proposing to do is we're um, looking to retain about 20 feet of existing vegetation between the bike paths, really, um, into where the um, array would be starting. The array would be starting about 35 feet from uh, the edge of a bike path, the interior edge going into the prop project. Um, 20 of that will be existing vegetation uh, that you currently see here by these photos. Um, and we believe that would be uh, an, an accurate, uh, an adequate um, visual vegetation screen uh, since it, it's very thick and dense um, to screen the array. Um, 
minimal visibility of the array once deployed. Um, on page 11, um, you'll see another aspect of the um, rack itself. I want to point out that this is a, a fairly low profile project um, as from a racking point of view. The high end of the, the high end of the rack itself is five and a half feet tall. Uh, so a little different from what you may have seen on island currently. Um, this, you know, would be approximately, you know, chest level, but it's very low in nature. Thank you. You know, I don't ordinarily speak for the board, but I think I can in this case, given how large this whole thing is. So this is uh, a, a, a very substantial array. One thing that I noticed when I was looking at that aerial photo is there seems to be a lot of grade change in there. Is it, this is an example of what, where? Uh, I believe this particular site is um, in Massachusetts. Um, I forget the exact township, but this will give you a sense of um, what the project would look like from a plan view. Okay, so they are low in relation to the trees and vegetation around, but I guess we're going to need some kind of an assurance or some way to be able to uh, be comfortable with the idea that these will be vis invisible from the publicly tra traveled ways that surround uh, this triangular piece of property. Yeah, in case of, in in the case of like um, the southern road itself, you actually have two sets of visual. Um, vegetation buffer uh, from the roadway itself. Uh, you have um, trees left and right of the bike path. Um, so you, in, in that case there, you actually have a, a double dose of uh, vegetation screening. Uh, which I appreciate, but you know, the, the funny thing about the trees is sometimes the canopy is up high enough so that you're able to see underneath them. And am I correct? Like I'm looking at this and it looks like there's an extreme amount of topography change here or. No, the, um, the, the, the site itself is, is fairly flat. Um, I think the slope analysis, you know, showed that it's under 5% slope for the, for the, for the site itself. Well, then those can't possibly be contour lines. I don't know what they are, but. They can't be contour lines. Sure. It looks sure. like Can you describe the water 20, well. Second? Twenty or twenty-five feet of vegetation. So, board members, now that you've heard anything, do you have questions, comments? I'd like to hear from you. I do. Go ahead. Um, so, thank you. Uh, I I did attend the meeting as the HDC oh. member when this came thank in, you. and I I I thought I was going to get some heads up when it was coming in so I could look at it again, but nonetheless. Um, so I do have some concerns. The um, number of panels in this array is staggering. It, it's hard for you to see in this, in this format, you're looking at it. There's over 10,800 panels, number one. Um, I'm concerned because our entire island is a National Historic District and we need to protect all the visuals from an aerial view, I think is also important because of the magnitude of this array. It's, um, I, I, I didn't ask Lauren this and I, it's because I just thought of it, but um, you know, when we do a project or people come in and, and they wanted, I'm trying to find Lauren to look at her, but um, if there is a change on a piece of property of some kind of construction over a thousand square feet, people are required to notify abutters. And I wanted to know if any of the abutters adjacent to this have any idea that this is going on and maybe that would be a good idea to let them know because I really do feel with the size of this that it, it is very important for people to know what's going on. Um, we, we talked a little bit at that meeting about the setback from the bike path. And I would just as a visual encourage everyone to think about 20 feet. It's a mandated parking space length for the planning board. 
Right. So think about your parking spaces at stop and shop. That's the distance of vegetation they're, they're offering to remain. And excuse me, um, what, what was confusing to me is that I, I have the ability on my computer to just blow this up to a bigger size. And there is a note, number five, it says all trees within this, within array boundary and those that will shade the array need to be removed prior to installation. Mm. So if that's the case, and we're gonna rely on revegetation, I, I have a lot of concerns about how that's gonna work. Um, our, our charge with our solar guidelines that we have right now is, um, we specifically require the location of panels to be in the most inconspicuous place possible to minimize uh, impact and visibility from a public view. And I, I am wondering whether there is an ability to properly screen over 14 square miles of panels. Um, and I would also note that the photos are showing the existing vegetation. And if you look at that, it isn't much of a, a dense vegetation. So I, I do think they will be, you know, you'll be able to see these. Um, we weren't sure about the support equipment and what that looked like and the sizes and how that was going to be screened, which I think are along is big. It goes from Pulpus Road to Milestone Road. Um, in different locations, it shows some little notes about um, the battery. I think they did address when we got together and how big that was. But maybe uh, you guys should explain that and and what. Sure. The yes. The the bat the battery itself, which is a, a Lockheed, uh sorry a, a Tesla unit, which is I believe. Uh, already a device that's installed on island uh, give you some perspective um, the unit itself um, the height of it is uh, per spec sheet is eight foot three feet uh, three, eight foot three inches that device will most likely be sitting on a 12 inch um, pad uh, bringing that height to nine foot three inches now that's the highest um, aspect of the system itself um, everything else, as far as the supporting electrical equipment, the solar switch gear, the transformer, lower than this height. So I thought it was important to establish our ceiling um, to set that bar. Okay. Um, and also to I, clarify, I, this, I'm not um, done yet. <laughs> Sorry. I, I just wanted to ask. You. Let let Val finish, and we'll get we'll get to you next. Okay, Diane. That's all right. I just want to ask you a question. I didn't need to get everybody all. In. No, no, it's all right. I, I know that Val Val just wants to make sure she covers all of her points. So continue, Val. Okay, um, fencing. What is the fencing being proposed? Because it's obviously going to have to be fenced in, and I think that's the green. If you can see yes. on that, uh, it's green um, uh, yeah. and correct. The um, green, the green poly line invisible on the the plant set um, encapsulates about 10.6 acres of land uh, between both array subarray one and two. That um, current fence is spec to be a galvanized chain link fence. Mm. Okay, so you need to keep that in mind too. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I'll say it's really hard for us to, this is a, this is something of a magnitude that we've never seen. And um, I was always under the impression that we had a solar overlay district at the landfill for things like this. So it, it, it threw me for a loop. Um, I would just say that I do have concern with in this location with regard to, and I know this is in our purview, I have talked to the land council to look into it about the, the water, the wellhead protection area that this is sitting over and that there's a, a, some sort of a habitat, highly 
protected habitat species in this area as well. But um, those are my concerns, Mr. Chair. Okay, well, thanks a lot. Um, that was very thorough. Uh, Diane, you're next. What I was wondering about when he showed that battery, it's nine feet mm -hmm. the, uh, tall on the plan. Where is that going? I, I read all the little notes. I can't see where it's supposed to be going. Sure. Um, so in subarray one on the eastern side of that array, uh, you'll see a little uh, magenta box there. Um, that is where a uh, collection of electrical co equipment would be co-located. The battery, the transformer for that particular subarray, as well as supporting electrical gear to combine all those sub-circuits into one circuit that it gets connected to the grid. So in that location okay, yep. there. It, yep. All right. And what's the orange? What's the that orange, orange is, line? Sure. The orange line is a proposed... Um, access path. So um, that would be an entrance. Uh, we'll be pursuing a, a curb cut there to allow for uh, vehicles to be able to come in to the site at that location um, for maintenance and various other aspects of the construction of the project. Um, and you'll see a, another small little uh, access road uh, supporting a subarray too. So the registration right, and, and, on this is is off because the orange line goes all the way across. Uh, yeah, the, the overlay is a little bit yeah, unfortunate no, there. That needs yeah. to be corrected because we we're, we're using this as a way of telling where the fencing is and what you know the existing vegetation is, and mm -hmm. if it's that far off, we have a little bit of a problem. Yeah, we have well, a, the an, road... oh, we have an ortho overlay adjustment here below this this drawing is a is a cad uh drawing we tried to snip an overlay to provide some some visual uh, um optics um i can quickly adjust that and show well, let's that let's that continue with path diane's path. comments sir we might be all night on okay this. the the road that's to the southwest of the number one what road is that Old South Road. Yeah. That's the Old South Road. Well, I, I agree with Val. Absolutely. I I think that the what you've got here, the array or whatever you want to call it, is too big for the area that you're contemplating. If you look at your drawing and the Old South Road, there certainly is no vegetation vegetation between the array and the road and the same on milestone it's this is the beginning of where people come in the rotary and all the rest of it and it's i don't know why is the crush not to wait for the for room or whatever at the uh dump but this is not the place in the center of, of the working of town to put an array this big with this little protection of being seen. What are those circular teal colored? Th those are the, uh, the wells, Diane. Yeah, those are the setbacks associated okay. with the wells. And there's a 400 foot, uh, those circles are 400 foot. So they have to stay outside of those. Correct. And what is the yellow line that's going around a lot of the property but ends the the yellow lines actually are existing infrastructure um, where you have um, overhead lines um, there's a, a sewer easement that passes through the 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 um, northwest corner of the triangle yeah well i i think that what it will do is good, but I think that this is too big a project to put on Milestone and South Shore Road, right at the rotary. I, it's got to go somewhere else behind the airport or the, or the dump, I really think. Or you can't move it in because you've got the wells. So I don't know what you're going to do. Okay, anyway, Thank you. Abby. 
Um, so the wells, the water wells, that means uh, it can't be uh, all put if closer into the middle no. and in a... Correct, there's a, a mass DEP uh, regulation that restricts um, this infrastructure getting that close to the wells. Shut the door. Yeah, uh, so, my, so my concern uh, is its proximity to the roads and the cut through from Old South Road to Milestone, the, the, the bike path that you can go through there. It's, it's so charming in the fall, it's, it's you know, it's picturesque. Um, and this is going to destroy that uh, because you will have a beauty strip along, I'm, I'm talking about the west side of this um, site, um, but it's not going to, it's going to suddenly be, uh, you're going to be able to see through and what you're going to see are these solar, is the solar array when uh, it's mostly pine trees, but you know, you know what happens in the winter. Uh, we see a lot more and um, I don't think that's a big enough buffer um, to, um, to hide all of this. And um, it's, uh, it's pretty industrial looking. Um, so I, I, it's hard for me to take in the magnitude of this, um, but uh, thank you Val for doing all that um, research and stuff because it helps me to understand uh, how big this project is. So those are my first thoughts. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Abby. John. John McLaughlin, are you still with yeah. us? Hi, I'm here. Okay. okay. Yep. Uh, I, have, I have a couple of questions, Mr. Mm -hmm. Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, how many panels are total in area one and two? Uh, a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Uh, yeah. What what what's the true answer to that? I, I heard sure. a number a minute ago. Yeah, I, uh, I can tell you in just one one 10, second. It's on the page at the Please bottom. Just scroll down a little bit. Yeah. Okay, John, you're you sitting go. down. Ten thousand eight hundred and thirty. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to get perception of it. Ten thousand? Okay. Yeah. Um uh, I have I have my own I would say thoughts on this uh, solar stuff and and where it's going. The, uh, I, I I question that with a start by the commission to to start making motions of where we're going to allow them. I I think I don't think there should there should be any larger amount of them going inside the old historic district area. Now this is the large area. It will be screened. I hope every bit of it. I, I don't have any comment from, uh, I want a comment from somebody that's in charge of this project of uh, how much screening is actually going to be done with bushes or are they going to leave, leave them exposed on the sides of the, the buildings or on the roofs? Well, this is a ground array, John. So they're not going to be on roofs, but uh, they have fencing and vegetation going around, but I think that maybe some of my comments, well, actually some comments that were already made already about visibility. Um, we're concerned about the amount of screening that the, these have, John. I think that's going to be a concern with everyone who's sitting on this, honestly. Uh, does that help you? Yeah, Ray, is, 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 Mr. Chairman, is this the only two spots we're speaking of right now? There's no more coming, am I right? Uh, not to my knowledge, John, but th this is a, you know, big, very large array, yes. Right, okay, thank you. Um, now the, the one I'm looking at where it says water wells coming yeah. coming off of Old, Old South Road? Milestone. Yeah, it's between Milestone and Old South Road, that big parcel that the uh, that the uh, Wana Comet owns. Okay, that's right. That's right. I'm disoriented. There's, there's a very large building on the bottom left on the Wana Oh, Comet. that's the town building, John. I'm sorry? The really big building that's on the south side of South Shore yeah. Road, not South Shore Road, uh, Old South Road, that's the town building. 
that used to be the electric company building and then that's the town parking lot right behind it. The HTC office. <laughs> the HTC office, exactly. Okay, I, I just want to get this right. It's hard to see. I've got a little yeah, yeah, it's wool. Uh, on the top left, it shows the uh, rotary. Correct. And then, then you pick up the Sconset Road right there. Yep. And that only goes down right, 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 right where the arrow is now. What are those two buildings across those the Those buildings are... Um, uh, Comcast. No. Island are Lumber. Com oh, yes, oh, they are Comcast. Island I'm sorry, you're, you're right. They are Comcast. Go ahead, Holly. Holly, what did you say? So this is Comcast over here with, with um, Monomoy. That's Island Lumber. Oh, okay. They're the new island lumber buildings. Correct. Yeah, okay. Right. Okay. Well, I'm just saying, uh, I think we're going to tighten down before we jump too far on any of this, uh, except for you try to stop it or slow it down. So much percentage of land can be used, like say, say, 20% uh, of, of a lot, and you want, you want some of this solar, then you allow 20%. So, some, some rules and regulations have got to be made before any of this gets accredited. So anyway, I'll leave it at that. That's, 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 that's my question. How many there were? 10,000 of them. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, John. Okay, so my comments are, I, I think that the, the only way I think this is going to work out is if you guys proceed with what I'll, I'm going to call baby steps, meaning that this doesn't all go in all at once, but that somehow the, you know, sort of the part that's furthest away from the road and has the most screening would get approved so that we're, we can comfortably and safely say that none of this is going to be visible from a public way. And then once we get comfortable with that, you know, maybe the, the array could be added on to um, so that we're able to monitor as it expands um, uh, whether or not we're going to uh, be, be seeing it. So I, I know that's not uh, an ideal scenario for you. It's much more cost effective to put it on, in all at once. But I think that this is such a vast undertaking as Val pointed out, and there's so much potential for this to be just really highly visible. And I don't think anyone, anyone on this conversation can an really anticipate what the visibility is going to be. Um, I think we have to proceed with baby steps. That's my opinion. So should we uh, take a vote on this one? No, don't you no, want no them to provide more information, like maybe something that we can hang our hat on? In other words, additional information, revisions, anything, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's clearly going to be uh, highly scrutinized. There's a lot of concern, a lot of unknowns. So we're going to throw it back to you guys. Sure. Um, um, I would like to get a little bit of direction as far as how we can be able to provide content in a manner that is easily digestible and, um, and accelerated when it comes to um, a review period. One thing I would like to comment on is that the overarching um, incentive program that is active within the state is a mechanism on which these this project is pulling uh, revenue from. Um, having a phased installation would break the model that's currently being proposed and providing economic benefit to the, the, the township. So there's, there's other drivers that are at play here um, that also would have to be just potentially just uh, understood a little bit more uh, when it comes to a development of this, this size. I... Go ahead, Val. Well, I think that it, that's a fairly similar thing with the tax incentives for the wind turbines and we cannot be, <clears throat> let us say pushed swiftly just because of that. This is, this is something that is gonna take uh, take this island by its breath mm -hmm. um, 
between all of the things we're being like assaulted with from all directions. So I understand your frustration. I think that it, there's a disadvantage to how this is also being reviewed because of COVID. We're looking at a screen that's about eight and a half by 11. This is something that should be like a PowerPoint presentation with us sitting in an auditorium and under really being able to see exactly what we're looking at. And uh, I think anything that you can do to make the, the areas of concern um, yeah. more clear so that we know exactly what we're, we're voting for. Um, as I said, uh, nobody's answered the question yet about note number five we're Correct. told we're going to get a 20-foot buffer and then it says trees within the array boundary and those that will shade the array need to be removed prior to installation so to me that's a little confusing and and how does that work mm -hmm. um yes absolutely the um the the again the green polyline on between one and two encapsulates about 10.6 acres um, we anticipate that there will be um, an additional probably acre or two outside of the fenced area um, to help mitigate shade um, this generator has to have access to be able to produce the the energy that is being forecasted and ultimately is rooted in the economics uh, I can probably show, you know, a cloud around the the limit of disturbance. Let's call it right. All all trees that are to be removed. Um, when it comes to you know providing some sort of um, additional visual aid um, to gauge what this system would look like on the ground, is a little hard right now to provide that context in a in a wooded lot. Um, okay, wait, wait, hold on a second. Yeah. You have to understand one thing here. You're giving us a really big project. We've got a really long agenda. And what we're saying is we want 100% assurance from you in terms of documentation of whatever nature to be able to tell us that this is not going to be visible from any public way. That's, that's it. That's all. Okay. okay. Would that be just introducing some sort of abravides around the array? No, 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 oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> that's the guidance I'm looking for. Well, but that's a disconnect for me because that's a tree that gets very tall and it's going to shade the array. So well, the other thing is there's arborvitaes growing out in front of the town building that are basically because of the deer, because the deer like to eat them are bare up to five feet high you can they're like they look like little lollipops so but we're not going to sit here and tell you which trees to use or not to use you have to come up with a program here that's going to come back with come back with something hey, mr chair um yes Mr. Chris Crudd, just uh on that point just for some guidance so we can come back with something that would be what you guys are, are looking to see has there been anything you guys have proposed in the past in regards to, let's say, uh, when it comes to screening that has worked out well for the HDC when there's been something that is ground mounted? I know it hasn't necessarily been solar, but I'm just trying to make sure we come back in with something that is I think at least in line with what you'd like to a, I think you should involve a landscaper who's going to be able to tell you, we're not just talking about trees here because we'll have people that come in and say, oh, we're going to plant Leland cypress all around this. And now you're not going to, you, you won't see it. But, you know, of course, the board hates Leland cypress because that's what everyone is using. Arborvitae don't work. Pines don't work. I think you need to talk with a landscaper who's going to come in with a program that blends in with the, the existing landscape around there. And there is one uses indigenous materials that are evergreen for a ground cover so that we're not seeing it on the lower level and then using something higher than that. So get much more, get into much greater depth about what the proposed plantings would be and or screening like chain link fence. 
that's not really screening. I know you need that for security, but it's not doing us much good in terms of blocking anything. So I think that you need to do sections through the site and that sort of thing that show us exactly how much space you're going to use, give over to plantings and that sort of thing so that we can, you know, do something other than just review this aerial photo with some colored, colored lines on it. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think that to feel I any bit of comfort whatsoever, if it gets to the, when it gets to the point where we're going to make a decision, yes or no, and vote, um, I would insist that we use our caveat statement uh, screen oh, yeah, definitely. inspection and thereafter in perpetuity. Um, okay. And have some okay. sort of, yeah. Okay, so right. the screening is definitely something we can work on. Um, I'm not sure how I can potentially adjust the scale of the project. That would be something that we would need to discuss with your counterparts within the township. Well, and, and to that end, I guess I would ask Lauren, does it have to be this of this magnitude to be a viable uh, project? Well, your concern was already voiced, Val about the scale of the project. And I think a number of people have commented, number of board members have commented on the, the scale of the, of the project. So it's clearly a concern. Now it's up to I, Lauren and company to, de to determine whether that's gonna be part of what they would um, amend or alter to be able to get us comfortable okay. with the project. Could I ask him a question or so he yeah. shows it? Yeah, but I would like to move it along, Diane. So go ahead. Okay, I'll do very quick. On on South on Old South Road, place number one, you have a green fence line, I believe, going around it all three sides of the triangle. And that isn't 20 feet any way, shape, or form along that way. That's a bicycle path. I don't know. Bicycle path does not count as as a wall of vegetation i think you have to look at this very seriously because we're not going to be rushed into it until we have to do this by a certain time maybe two years from now we'll have something you can look at but it's going to take some deep study in order to make this definitely. a viable thing definitely thank true. you Okay, thanks, Diane. So let's have a motion here, could we? Hope for revisions, I think major. That, uh, revisions and probably some more information, okay? Mr. Um, Shannon. Yeah. Mr. Oh. Shannon? Yes, John. I have a question before you close it out. Uh, mm -hmm. Is there someone involved with this company that they want to do a walk around I think it should be done by all members, and I would like to be, have it available to me. Okay. I want to see, I want to see all the screen areas. Lauren, Lauren, could you um, maybe think about John's request, which would be, you know, some sort of, it, it can't be done as a group because we would have quorum issues, but maybe, you know, to bas basically be able to have individual members come out and show them around where things would go, I think that would be a helpful uh, tool to have. Absolutely. We talked to the uh, Mark Willett, the water company director, and he's, um, you know, open to putting up a mock panel at the right angle, um, putting idea. markers in to see setbacks. Um, and also there is a commitment from the water company to relocate, um, you know, veg vegetation and to screen because I think we're all in alignment. There's such a need for this project, but we do want to minimize the impacts as much as possible. But this is okay. the only viable site for the next foreseeable future, years and years. Okay. Um, Thank you, Lauren. Chair, with the revisions, I think they should, uh, with Diane's point about the bicycle path, the bicycle path is is a route through through the trees which people take to get to work and that's got to be maintained. And well, so just to that point, Abby, this thing that we're looking at is all messed up because this would this would have the panels like right on the bicycle path, which clearly they're not planning on doing. Right. I'm just my just my point is if they're going to put up like we asked for poles, um, 
if they're going to put up something, I wonder if they don't want to make revisions to this drawing or this application so that it's correct. Like where exactly will those panels go? Yeah. Well, um, well, we have to have that, yeah. Yeah, so okay. I, I mean, so, that would be part of the revisions is to right. make so, the drawing. Correct. Right. Okay, so Diane has made a motion to hold this for revisions and additional information. So on that on that motion, John. Yes, sir. I uh, yes, I have I have an immediate question that popped up. Okay, can you, can you just say uh, I? Yeah. Uh, let me look at his map again. John. Okay. Yes. There's a motion on the table, John. Yes. There's a motion to hold for revisions and additional information. Are you in favor of that motion? John. That cuts me off from asking the question and it's on the table, right? Okay, but what's the question? Because we really have to move this along. No, never mind, Just go ahead. No, are you in favor of the motion, John? Am I in favor of the motion? Yes. Yes. Thank you, John. Abby. Uh, aye. Val. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. <laughs> Moving right along. Let's see. We covered five items in an hour. That's a record. Um, so 22 King Street Shed. Yes. Hello. This is Tim Yackel, the applicant. Okay. You have the regular board, Tim. Okay. Um, it's a single story, uh, eight by eight shed. Um, it's in the, the corner of our yard um, at 22 King Street in Sconset. Um, it's not visible from the street or the driveway. I have some, some pictures showing that a little further down. So it would okay. sit back. No, sit it's, in back the, it's in the back of your property. Yes, correct. Okay. Oh, it has a cupola on it. Now I know why it went to, um, to the regular board. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, there's a few things on this, but have you finished, Tim? Uh, pretty much. There's, there are some pictures further down, if that's helpful. Okay. So while you do that, I'm going to ask Holly if we have any Sconset advisory. I'm sure we do. Yes, sir. Sconset advisory saw it on Monday. Mm. Um, and although it is barely visible, there was a, co a comment that the cupola is a little over the top. Um, that was but, a joke, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Unintended. Um, and we also had a, a conversation about the, the windows. Um, I mm. noted that typically sheds uh, fenestration usually matches the main dwelling. I believe the main dwelling does have six over ones. Um, but there was a comment that um, although it's not visible from the street, they would prefer to see six over six. Um, and then there was a general comment comment that it looks like a dollhouse. But those are the comments. OK, Thank thanks. Um, OK, guys. Uh, I would motion to approve and remove the cupola and make the window a six over six. Uh, I like it. Uh, John, would you be okay with that? Yeah, I'm sure you got it. The cupola ought to go. The rest of it looks good. Val's making a motion that says that the cupola will go away and that the window will become a six over six instead of a six over one. Is that all right? Right. Okay, so Val, I think we'll continue with your motion. So the motion, Val has made the motion to approve this getting rid of the cupola and changing the six over one window to six over six. Um, on that motion, Abby. Aye. Thank you, Diane. Aye. Val. Aye. John. Aye. And I'm in favor. We, we did go. I want the minutes to state that the cupola should go. Oh, it did go, John. The, the go cupola ahead. is, go is ahead, going. Right. It's gone. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks. Uh, so that was number four, number five, nine Main Avenue um, renovation shed. Hey, guys. Hi. That sounds like Stephen. There you go. Yeah. Yep. 
Okay. So we have an existing shed uh, that we're just renovating. You can see the photos graphs that I've submitted. Uh, the shed is on this actually on this parcel here. If we go into the site plan, this was purchased at a later date and is still in land court in Boston uh, for its uh, sale to go through. The owner uh, has this existing shed on its property. It's sitting in the dirt. And we're basically just putting a foundation underneath it and we're gonna restore the shed. Uh, it does increase in height by two feet because we're putting a foundation and a floor underneath it. Part of it is sitting, uh, the right-hand side of it is sitting on the dirt floor as we speak. There's no flooring or foundation underneath it. Okay. Um, do you have photographs of this, Stephen? Yes, they're in the they're submitted with the application. Uh, uh, what, what's the, the, the red bubble? Is an addition? No, no, that's the, uh, that's the shed itself. That's the proposed. Oh, I see. Yeah. So you're just adding some, uh, some yes. French doors there and Correct. like some sliding doors covering the French doors. Okay. And uh, Holly, could you back up now that I understand what the bubbles are about? So here, I think there's some letters. We're basically keeping the same uh, the same appearance, just putting the foundation underneath it, and making the space a little more useful. Okay, and so we do have photos. You said yes. Okay, and there it is. Okay. All right. Um, now, Holly, Kathy, do we have letters written about this? Um, we did have one for the pool, but the pool was pulled, so no. Okay. okay. Just making sure. So it's getting two feet taller than it is right now. Yes. It's going from five foot ten to, well, no, wait. Because it actually looks like it already sits on piers. Part of it does, and part of it's on the dirt. Okay. Okay. Uh, any further comments, or should I get to the board? Mr. Chairman. Yes, John. Yeah, uh, this, I just gave information. This small building used to be called Eel Skin Inn. Oh, that's where the uh, farmer, uh, the fishermen used to skin a lot of eels there from, from the creek. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, wow. Thank you. Thank you, John. That's very interesting. Um, comments yeah. from the board. Sorry, uh, this is in Madiket? Yeah. Okay. I, I, I... Oh, P.S. No Madiket advisory? Holly. Chair, not that I'm aware of. No, I was not. Um, um, Mr. Chair, they're they're not starting to meet until next week. Okay. okay. Um, but to that point, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, NHL, and, and this goes to um, John's little information there, does indicate that obviously this is a historic structure, um, circa 1860. Wow. Indicating as it's a bungalow. Hmm. So just to be very clear on this, the intention isn't to change anything other than to add those doors, raise it up two feet on a foundation. Anything else, Stephen? Oh, that's it. If you look at, uh, if you look through my camera here, this is, you can see a part of the foundation. I don't know if you can view my, uh, my Zoom thing here from my camera. Mm -hmm. There is uh, the dirt floor under the right-hand side of it, which you can see. And then um, the uh, interior is more modern lumber than you see here. It's not really 1800s. This is nominal. The back half of that shed lean to is a nominal uh, two by four lumber, probably about 1930s. Okay. Okay. All right. We wanted to keep the general appearance of it, but create some more usable headroom and, and storage for the, the shed itself. 
and secure it with the foundation underneath it. Okay. Board members. I'll take a shot at it. Thanks. Go ahead. Bill. Um, so I'm just looking at the drawings, you know, in a bigger format on my computer. Um, and what's unclear is that it doesn't look from your plans, Steve, that it's just raising up with a foundation. It looks to me as if the wall height's being increased in places. Um, oh, that, that is correct. It was, so, no, uh, it was not intended to keep the same wall height. We are raising the, the wall height to make a little more useful headroom space in there because it's down to about four feet in one section or five feet in one section, yes. You wanted to keep the general appearance of, the sh of, the, of it whatsoever, but the owner wishes to create a little more headroom to make it a little more useful. So it's confusing and I'm sorry. The re uh, I'm just looking at the north, for instance, and you have a drawing of existing. Uh, and then you have yeah, two um, drawings showing proposed for the north. Let's go back. I can't see that right now, Val. Can we, can we scroll to the north elevation, please? And it looks like, like so, there's headroom being added all the way around, like over the doors. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah yep. that is correct, Val, yes, because it's, uh, it's less than six feet. It's like six foot, uh, four inches for the plate height on the existing. That is correct. So we're, we're putting up the foundation and we're raising some of the wall height to get more usable space on it. And as you can see by the photographs that were there, um, it is more of the 1930s framing lumber than the 1800s lumber that uh, is depicted. The intent is to keep the general appearance of it, but getting a little more headroom inside the structure to make it useful, that's all. Yeah, so I, <sighs> I don't know. Somebody else can go. I'm just confused because we have two Norths that are proposed. They're they're different. And yeah, wait wonderful. until I'm done asking the yeah, question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, it, it's just that it's not clear to us exactly what's happening because it looks like it's getting lifted up. So that's a new floor. It's getting height added on the top. So that's a new top, new roof, new whatever. It's what is actually staying. The roof is staying. We're just raising the wall, but we're, we're adding to the plate, Val, okay? This elevation that shows the two windows is what's behind the doors. Because you always ask if, you, if there's something behind the doors, you want to see what's there. So I'm not hiding anything. I'm just showing that when these doors are open, there are two windows there. Okay. You want to okay. Keep Get that. the doors in place. That. That's all. Yeah, it well, just but, your presentation wasn't clear when you started. And yeah, so I'm that, just asking. Val's main point here, Stephen, and I have to agree with this, is that it isn't just taking the building and raising it two feet. It's oh. actually like stretching the whole building, you know, so that it's all taller. Yeah. Um, so That's that like cool. the proportions and all that change. I just want to be clear on that. Yes. Um, so Val. Yeah. Given that, now, th th thank you for pointing that out. Given that, where are you on this? Um, okay, except for, I think, maybe the sliding glass door on the west. Okay. All right. Is that it? Yeah. Okay. Abby? Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, so. If this is the old eel shack, um, I, I think the proportions have changed in in making it two feet higher. It it sounds like you're not doing much, but to me, the doors on the far right. If we go back to the north, um, it, it sees the, where it, existing north elevation. The one that's on the bottom there is is sort of quaint and subtle and and then if when it's sort of steroided up it it sort of changes its proportion for me i mean um and if this is a historic structure i'm just wondering i don't want to go out there and take a view but uh 
it just uh, it just just looks a, a, a little bit uh, too uh, lost its original profile, which yeah. which I think is so sweet. So let, let somebody else go. Okay, um, Diane. I am. What is the increase in square footage of the building? Zero. What? Zero. Zero. The footprint's the same, Diane. Okay, but it does go up, so it's got two more feet square footage somewhere. Well, well no, no, no. Uh, that's, that's a cubic volume. The footprint hasn't changed, but it's gotten taller, definitely. Right, so I wondered what the square footage of the interior of the building was. How much more room does he have now than he had oh, before? Well, he has more head height. So yep. like the floor, the floor size is the same, but he's going to have more room to walk around because the ceilings aren't so low. I understand that. I okay. don't know you. you am I didn't get the question, but I think that the uh, could I see the west and the south? I can't. All I've got here is the north. I think that the uh, proposed east celebrate. Uh, elevation is uh, I don't know whether the height of that is increased has lost its rather simple and nice proportions now it looks kind of tall and and not very much building uh, I don't know somebody else may feel more about it, but I think that the height has not done it any favor. That's all. Okay. Hey, Diane. Yes. I, I totally agree with you. I think that once I had a chance to sort of see what was happening with this addition of the two feet, I thought that the two feet was like just raising the building up and putting on a proper foundation, but it's actually stretching this building taller. So I, I think that all of the charm of this building is, you know, basically eradicated because it's so small, two feet is a very significant number to be raising. So I think that this has to be looked at. Um, uh, I don't mind moving it up some, but certainly not the two feet because that's that just throws off the proportions of everything. Uh, most particularly the gable uh, that you uh, see right in that photo on the right hand side. You know, John, I didn't, I, I heard your comment about the eel skin in, but we didn't get your comment. So it's your turn. What are your comments, John? John? Yes. What are, what are your comments on this application? On the application, I think, I think the building itself is unique in the yeah. way it was built and structured. It's, uh, I, I agree with. Valerie, on that uh, one of those sliding doors should disappear. There's too much wall space, and the uh, any anything is an improvement. Thank you. Okay, John. All right. So I think everything's been said. Um, can I have a motion from somebody? Um, I, I'll make a motion. Okay. Um, make a motion to hold for some revisions. Uh, more clear. Um, identification of what's actually happening to the building and some historic information because I've heard a lot about this eel skin in and I think that it warrants some sort mm -hmm. of research. Good point. Okay, so that is your motion, right Val? Yeah. Okay, so on that motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you. Abby. Aye. John. Aye. Thank you, Val. Aye. And I'm in favor, motion carries. Okay, next up. Thank three, you guys. Thanks. Um, next up, three Summer Street. Do we have Ethan on board? Good evening. Hi. Okay. Ethan. 
Uh, so what we're proposing here is a- You got all dressed up for us. <laughs> you did. Normal, normal close. All right. Um, this is a uh, one-story addition uh, to the rear of a former carriage house uh, for, I think it's uh, 92 Main Street. Um, okay. The, yep, uh, that, so this is, I think, the pr a previous HCC application site plan. And then uh, this is the front of the house that you're looking at. The one with a cupola on it. Correct. Okay, and, so that's not on Main Street. That's obviously on... Um, Summer Street. Yeah. So a long time ago, this lot went all the way through. Uh, I see. And it was subdivided. Okay. All right. So is your addition going on this building? Correct. So where that current little um, shed war is on the rear, yep. that's where the new addition's going, which you'll see probably pretty okay, clearly. Got on it. Thank you. All right. So that's the existing elevation and yep. then proposed below. Um, so on the south elevation, I'm going to try and get this right. So south elevation proposed. That's not the front of the building. Correct. That's, that's, that's the, the side, side of, the of the building. building. Yeah. You and the west of... faces the back. Correct. OK. Got it. And the lot is actually, you can see a little bit in the aerial, and I tried to indicate it on the elevations, but there's actually a fairly sizable privet and arbor uh, that largely shields this entire kind of facade from the street. Also, the adjacent building to the south is a two-story building that's right on the property line. So these are all kind of very close together structures. Okay. Maybe we should go back to the site plan. Uh, there we go. Okay. So your addition is... You you see the main rectangle, the one that has the cupola on it. Your addition is just due north of that. Correct. We bumped none out of the that stuff that goes that moves out to the west, right? Correct. None of the the stuff that's on the west there is, um, or I'm sorry, yeah, it's it's everything that's moving towards the north. Everything on the west is that's existing hardscaping. Okay, got it. Thank you, Ethan. Um, board members, if you have any questions or comments on this, I'd like to hear. From sure. You. Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. Yes. That's okay. Oops. I have historic structures. Okay. Comments. Um, I actually recommend a view um, because of the po possible visibility of the proposed um, additions to the his historic structure. Uh, but overall, uh, HAB comments um, question whether or not you could see the, uh, the view from the west. Um, also, the French door that's um, facing, it's not, it, it, well, it's not the, the, the best to have on here. Um, and there was a comment about not particularly liking the change to the, um, the south. It was awkward with that door next to a door mm, mm -hmm. here. Yep. Um, but however, the, the addition with the balcony seem to be okay due to the lack of visibility. But again, I question that visibility. Um, there was a comment about changing the door to a large window instead of having these, these French doors here. Um, and there was a comment about loving, love to see the uh, wires go underground. Um, and then of course, if that was to change to a window, it would be a, say a eight, um, eight, 12 window. Right. Like the others. Yeah. Yes, sir. Those are the comments. Oh, it actually is an eight and 12 window right now. It's, Correct. If you look at the existing. Yes. Yeah. Um, hey, Ethan. Sure. The site plan has the front of the house facing south, right? Uh, it, it, well, it's uh oh maybe it's not labeled. yeah okay yeah, you know so see, summer street oh, yeah. is on the south my apologies i think you've mislabeled these because you know, this is a south elevation it's really a west elevation yeah you're right it's it's really yeah it's yeah it's more west than south for sure right I apologize. 
So that should be changed. But now other board members, what do you think? I walked by here today. Yep. yep. Um, and there is a large hedge there. So I do think some of it will be mitigated. However, I um, question the visibility of the balcony. And I really walked around the neighborhood and I didn't see any other second floor balconies. Um, so that would be my main concern and maybe not having two doors, just having one maybe the farthest away from the road and possibly uh, doing something different with the railing so it blends in better or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, the south is what you see when you go through the arbor. So perhaps the French door should be moved somewhere else. Um, and if not at the very least become just a single, you know, 15 or 12 light door with a panel or something, cause it is conflicting with the front door. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Thanks Val. Um, Abby, you ready? Yeah. Um, what is the date of this building? Uh, I, I think it's on the application, but maybe 1909. If you can scroll up, it's, I think I listed it. Oh, on okay, the that's good enough. Um, on, what is actually the west uh, elevation? I, I, I hate to sound like a purist, and I love your stuff, Ethan. Um, I I feel in the in the drawing, if we could that 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 is such a, a iconic profile. That that is such a pure, beautiful building. I hate to see it touched. Putting two French doors and ruining the symmetry of that facade is it's killing it for me. Um, so, you know, I don't mind the ele elevations uh, being changed, but the, on the, what's labeled South, but is actually West, I, I really think that should be left alone. Um, and, and also the reverse of that, which I guess is the East uh, also has such, a be beautiful proportions. It's just, it's just really um, iconic to me. Uh, I would like to see as little done to this house as possible. Um, and I guess that would mean most the the renovation would be on the south, the real uh, south. The, on the north. On uh, is it the north? The okay. north is the side furthest away from. Furthest the away. Yes, I I I don't you know do whatever you want, you know, additive massing on the back, but please that this, the, um, the real West is, is, uh, it's really lovely. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Thanks Chair, a lot, I just yeah. wanted to note Tate for the, the commission, the NHL data indicates that this is early 1800s. Um, mm -hmm. I don't typically go by the tax assessors information um, cause sometimes it can be skewed and that indicates that it's 1850. So I'm not too sure where 1909 comes from. I just wanted to uh, question Ethan on that. Sure. Uh, that came from the, the historic survey, which I, I think I include a copy of in the submission. I don't know if it's in this PDF packet, but it was definitely included as part of the, uh, Oh, there it is. I thought it said 1909. Let's see. Uh, hold on dwelling up oh. 1920 dwelling before 1923 barn in 1909 something else that i can't read right well, I, you know it's possible it was uh you know renovated in those times but I, it I, it has a a sure of a, an old uh an old look to it. So I, 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 I would like to check that. Yep. Okay. Thanks, Abby. Diane. I think, could I see the picture of the front, the not, not of the drawing, but the actual picture? That picture right there with the three windows and the two up above and whatever mm -hmm. is absolutely perfect. I am with Abby on that. It would be so sad to change that. It's so simple. It's 
fits everything that you think of with a building. Um, if it is 1850, if it's 900, 1900, it's it's a hundred and twenty years old. I I I don't know where you could put it in that it wouldn't be seen. But I think the the facade facing the street, and I guess the that's west. Then it would be south and even east because you can see it as you come up Trader Lane that it would be unfortunate. I think it's just a sweetheart of a building there. Thank you. Thank you, Diane. John. Yes, sir. Uh, that building on this building, the history of it, I grew up in that area. It's uh, um, Admiral Halsby's brother bought this property from Main Street to Summer Street. And in the, in the, in the 60s, it used to be a two-car garage with that shed roof, and he took it out and he made finished it off as an apartment. Interesting. And that, that's how he got three windows. He got rid of the two garage doors. Hmm. But I, I, I can say that anything's an improvement. Okay. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Um, so my comments are very much in line with uh, Val's like the north side, I think, is going to be very difficult. No, I would say, and I live, I live in the neighborhood, impossible to see the northern stuff. Um, I think you did yourself a disservice uh, lab <laughs> mislabeling the cardinal points on these, because I think there's a lot of confusion about which side you're actually doing work on. Um, so you should change that. I think that to Abby's point, you should do a little bit more historical research. Um, you know, it sounds like the, the building has been tinkered with, but it would be nice to know sort of the, the history of it. Um, so can we have a motion on this, folks? Uh, Mr. Chairman, can I just add? I, I'd really uh, love it if uh, we could definitely get it on a view list, because I think that will be helpful. For okay. Me. Yeah, that'll, that'll be part of the motion. Um, okay, motion for a view and revisions. And could we have some historical documentation? Please. Yep. Thank you. So view revisions, historical documentation on Abby's, on Abby's motion. Diane. Aye. Thank you. Val. Aye. John. Aye. Thank you. Abby. Aye. I'm in favor. Okay. Now let's move on to 10 Pleasant Street, the deck. Um, Holly, Holly, could you, yes, zoom, could you zoom in on the locus there so I can see where it is exactly? It's a pleasant summer. Oh yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay, Ethan. Okay, so this is a proposed second floor deck off the master uh, to replace an existing kind of lean-to style deck. Uh, we will be preserving the arbor and transferring the trellis and the, and the roses onto this deck. Um, so just, just sort of FYI. There's also um, a fairly significant fenestration, fenestration adjustment as well, which you'll see on the next elevation. I do think, um, I, I think this might've been on the view list as well. Similar to Summer Street, there's just no visibility if you've kind of walked in the area around Pine and Pleasant and, and High. Um, there's limited visibility from High, but you're looking at it on the oblique. Um, so that's my uh, bill. Didn't Chip, Chip did something to this house a few years ago, I think. Yes. Yeah, so the Schneiders, uh, they, this family, same family owns this and the next door neighbor, uh, 12 Pleasant, so 10 and 12. Uh, we did a first floor renovation, which is essentially that bay window that you see, or that bay with the window and that other French um, door. That kitchen renovation was done probably in the early 2000s. Yeah. And that's kind of the look they wanted to, quite frankly, replicate uh, with the, um, the new door and, and windows out the master. Okay. 
Thank you, Ethan. Okay, board members. Mr. Chair, uh, I do have HSAP oh. comments for your consideration. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so um, the comment about the the door proposed um, to simplify, um, have it without the transom, don't like that way, way too much. Um, windows should align to simplify. If you notice on this elevation on the second floor um, and the 12 over 12, basically get removing the, the transom and have the, the windows aligned there. Um, move deck two feet off of the edge so it's not visible. Um, there's a, there was a conversation about it possibly being visible from Pine Street and this seems to be excessive glass. Um, there was also a comment about the amount of, granted that the existing windows may not be historic to the existing 1780s typical Nantucket four bay facade structure, but um, how much of the historic fabric is being removed? Because at the end of the day, if you're replacing two ganged windows for French doors, you're also, you know, you're increasing the amount of disturbance, if you will, in that existing historic fabric. Um, so that was something um, that was that was notated. Um, overall, um, I had a comment about uh, its possible visibility from uh, High Street on that side street there. So those are our comments. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Okay, now board members. I'll go. Thanks, Val. Um, I, I do think the visibility is limited. I like some of HSAB's suggestions, maybe scooching it in off the corner so you don't see it for sure. Um, and the transoms, uh, yeah, I think just make that unnecessarily complicated. What I can't figure out is if, are the windows that are existing just up high on the wall? Because if you move the door without the transoms up, it won't work, right? So I'm a little confused about that window placement, but um, overall, I, I think it's okay. Just needs to have a few modifications. Okay, thank you, Val. How about you, Abby? Yeah, I, I think Val's suggestion is good. Bring, bring it back from the corner. The um, the little balcony there. Um, maybe um, I know there's not a, a a panel on the bottom of those French doors, but that might be a little more um, historic to have a panel there instead of a full. But I don't know about that. Definitely not the the transoms. I would I think that's adding uh, too much. Um, I miss the, you know, the purity of the, you know, the existing, but, um, I, it's, it's not bad. I, I think I'll probably go along with, um, an approval. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Diane. Yeah, it's, uh, I understand about the windows on on the east and the doors down on the on the floor i i don't know i don't think this room but i'd, I'd like to see windows on either side of those that doors those doors to give the the first floor under the under the uh little roof some solidarity to the to counteract the two on up up above, but that's other than that, I think I could go along with it. Okay. Okay, thank you. John. Yes, I find that the uh, visibility mm -hmm. of the three transoms might possibly be seen from the side street above that low roof on the right, and you should eliminate them. The transoms. Yes. Yeah, I think everybody's in favor, John, of getting rid of those transoms, including me. Right. Yeah. That's, that's a lot of glass in that area. Is that it, John? That's it. Thank you. 
Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, I'm generally in line with it. Ethan. How tall? What What are the heads of those existing windows on the it, second? Floor? It's a good question. They're they're high. They're uh, they're like seven three, I think. And we Ooh. also are proposing like a six six slab on that French door because the client really did want to have that look of the transom, similar to what they have. Okay. Well, I don't. I don't. Think, I I don't think um, there's anyone who wants the transoms. I, from, I from, agree eight sab all the way through every board member, including myself. So my suggestion would be do, do the windows on either side to match the one that's existing to the right there and just make the doors taller so that, so that they don't have transoms, but they line up with the heads of the windows. So that's my comments. Can we have a motion to hold this for some revisions? I mean, I, I think quite honestly, if, if I may, I, I think the client ultimately would, would be happy with that. I think at the end of the day, they just want the glass and the door. So if we could approve it with without the transoms and then raising the height so they all align with existing, I, I think we could. Oh, okay, well. well what, we always also, uh, Val's suggestion of bringing it off the corner, I think that's. Oh yeah, how are you with that? And I don't think two feet, it doesn't necessarily need to be two feet, but some some margin. No, but, just a foot. Yeah, I think it will a foot, well, because that'll, that'll bring the pilaster inside the corner board as well, and it'll give some. Right, right. Too, so I think we can do that. Okay, so. I'll try to form a, a through staff. Love that. Uh, so motion to approve uh, through staff with the following revisions to remove the transoms. What elevation is that? On the east. Um, to line up the windows and the doors somehow. Hey Val, I'm sorry I got to interrupt you just for a second. Okay. I'm pretty sure. Oh no no sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Nope. And to bump the the deck and the posts in a foot from the edge so that it will diminish the visibility from a public way. Okay. Thanks for the motion, Val. On that motion, Diane. She's muted. Yeah. She's an aye. Aye. Oh, Diane was an aye. Abby? Aye. Thank you. John? Aye. Thank you. Val? Aye. And I'm in favor. So there you go, Ethan. You got that. One. Thank you. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes. May I take a 10 minute break here? Yeah, sure. So we'll have some associates step in for you. Um, thank you. Thank you. And uh, okay, so. Um, let's see, Carrie, are you still with us? I am. You want to sit on these next two for Joe? Sure. Okay. Joe Topham, hit it. Uh, hello, Ray Paul. Hello, and else. Joe. So this is a house that is set way off Cliff Road. It goes down a private little way at 69 and a half Cliff Road. It's a house that was built in the 50s, little cape. And from, I think, 1984, um, it was added onto on the back end, a, a story and a half structure and a garage uh, for Steve Cousins, you know, when he was living there. Uh, but clients have kind of outgrown the house. So what they want to do is go up to a story and a half and, you know, in the, in the whole entire um, uh, property. Uh, as well as the first floor. So we've gotten to such a point where we value engineered this that it's really probably best to either remove the, the structure or just knock it down. Um, it's not in bad shape, but just the entire exterior shell, all the windows would have to be replaced. So that's why we're at that kind of tipping point or um, removing it. So um, the structure is down about four feet from the abutting properties. Uh, from Hamlin, one Hamlin way, there's a retaining wall that's, you know, four feet on North Star, um, one North Star and four North Star, if I've got it, those numbers right. Those properties are also, you know, four feet above. And as you're exiting the property or entering the property, you go from Cliff Road up a little rise, then drop down um, a good, you know, four to five feet down to this little valley gully that this house is set in 
Um, but that, that's basically our program is to just go up to a whole uh, story and a half structure. Thank you. Do we have photographs oh. of this, Joe? Yes. Because I'm trying to get my arms around, you have two applications here. And the one what? that we're reviewing first is a demo move off. So it's, you're, you're simply put, you're, you're asking for a demo move off of this existing building that we're looking at right now. Correct. And yeah, but then we're just going to use the existing foundation. The existing foundation is fine. So okay. we're just going to go up right. from there. I want, to, I want to just sort of stay on point here. So the building that we're looking at, you're requesting to have removed. Removed or, or demoed. Well, that's removed too. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, and the vintage of this you said was 60s? Yes, and the front part at the lower uh, ranch style, the front um, south side is uh, 60s and the back, you know, um, salt box mass is uh, 84, 83. I think Steve Cousins did the addition. Okay, all right. All right, very Mr. good. Chair? Yes. There is a letter from an abutter um, for the new dwelling, just so you know. Okay, for the new dwelling, but but right now we're on the, the demo move yeah. off. So I'm gonna proceed. Um, just as a point of clarification, sorry, uh, representing the abutter. Um, yeah. I would say effectively it would be a demo because I don't think there's any way to effectively remove this structure from the lot. Well, and the, yeah, so and that's I, I agree. Move demo move off is if if it's possible to move it off and somebody can take it that's great but if it isn't and as you know ethan often it is not then the board has to be prepared that the, the building's actually going to be completely demolished so board members i'd like to hear from you folks i personally would like to see what's proposed in its okay. place okay D does everyone else feel the same way? Yes, me too. Yes. Okay, so Joe, why don't we then move, we'll move over to your new dwelling. Okay. So uh, again, same. <laughs> just going to take, you know, is either, we're, we're just going to remove the building, but it, it's, we're going in the exact same footprint, more or less, uh, that the current structure is sitting on. Um, right, but it's going to be a different design, I would guess. Yeah, it's going to have, it, yeah, it has dormers and it's, you know, it's a store, right. like I said, it's a store and a half in the back. Okay. But, but it, it started out as a renovation and it just became, oh, let's, let's do this, let's do that. So. Got it. Got it. Okay. It, it, it grew. Yep. So let's take a look at what you got. Okay. So that, that How is. Tall is it, Joe? Go ahead. No, I just asked how tall it is. We, it's hard. Oh, so it's 29.6 in the back. And um, the property, uh, Ethan's uh, parents' house, that is around 29 feet. So, you know, basically, as my clients kept driving by, they were like, well, we would like something taller. So that's why we did a store and a half. Um, and then everything up on North Star is around 29 feet. But if you can see to the right of that, of our house, you can see the retaining wall that is currently there now that's gonna probably have to be replaced because it's rolling. Um, but that just shows you how much lower this dwelling is compared to the rest of the neighborhood. What is the, is this the front of the building? That's basically the front as you're driving from Cliff Road to the property, that's what you would see. Okay. So the. You know that what where the garage doors are now that the French doors, um, mm -hmm. that's been their playroom, and so now they just want to take the storm doors that they have now and do some French doors. Uh, that way they can use it all year long. Okay. And that can't be seen unless you're at one Hamlin, and I've spoken to the. Uh, Meryl, uh, the neighbor, and she was fine with the property and the design. She really liked it and um, had no issues. And they met with the Padars and really liked the property. This abuts or faces North Star, which you can't see because it's, you know, 100 feet away from the road and uh, 
two other properties in front of it. And uh, there's <laughs> nine, 10 foot tall privet in between that as well. Okay. okay. Mr. Chair? Yes. Um, I would just, if I, if I may, I just wanted to notate that I, I know this is not within the old historic districts um, review area, um, but I just wanted to add that the existing structure that's there has a lot of additive massing to it, whereas the proposal does not. And I just wanted to notate that to the commission. Okay. Thank you, Ollie. Yeah, and there was no, all, there was also, Ray, there was no review of this structure at all to say it was contributing, non-contributing. I just don't think that anyone knew the building was back there. So, yeah, we couldn't find any information on the building. So The NHL data did say circa 1950s, you know, that was uh, probably a, a windshield yeah. Um, yeah. inspection. <clears throat> um, okay. Ethan, were we going to hear from somebody? Um, sure. Uh, I mean, we submitted a, a letter, but um, I can just kind of run through the bullet points. That would be really good. No objections to the proposal. Um, just Did wanted, you say you have no objections? Correct. No objections. Did want to point a couple of things out that the board just might want to consider. Um, the locust plan does show that the lot appears to extend all the way to Cliff Road. That's not quite the case. That private way actually goes to the bottom of the lot. So that leg is actually the private way that's part of 69 cliff. Uh, so just a point of clarification on that. Um, okay. The uh, It looks like most of the height, quite honestly, is being driven by what I'd consider closer to one and three quarter story massing. Um, again, there's no, we don't really have an issue with the proposed work, but um, I think maybe story and a half could be more appropriate. And it's largely just on that rear kind of mass. Uh, Joe's correct, this thing sits in a hole I don't know what was going on with Hamblin and North Star, but they built up the the site all around it. Um, so they definitely yeah. have some challenges to work with. <laughs> oh, and then um, the gable dormers uh, may be more appropriate with shed style dormers, but again, that's for you guys. Oh, thank you. Uh, Ray, can I just answer one thing? Yeah. So just the, on, the, on the GIS map, the only reason I showed that uh, Phil was just to let you guys know how to get to the property. Uh, Bracken has staked the property. We know oh, what they own. So yeah, it was it was just to help yeah. you get a visual of how far away the property was or how to if you had to go see it. That's that's the way to get to it. Yeah, they they know they don't own the property. So okay. thank you. that's a good explanation. Thank you, Joe. Yeah. Okay, board members. Uh, one, one one question. Yes, go ahead. Hi, hi this is Michael Graylar. I'm at one Hamblin Road. Uh, yes. Abutting the back of the property. Okay. Uh, could, could the architect just comment on any plans about the landscaping at the rear of the property uh, between basically the uh, our property and their property? I think the right. only thing that I think the only thing that we're looking to do now was um, we actually haven't even really talked about that. We do have a shed in the setback that we do have to remove. And I do think that there was some evergreen or privet planting that was gonna go in between. But um, I do know that the Badaras, once this gets moving forward, they would like to reach out to everyone and just say, when we remove the shed, what are we gonna do? And we do know that there's a project coming in between us and Cliff Road. And so we're, we're concerned about what they're gonna do. So I think, as neighbor, being neighbors, they want to reach out to everyone and say, all right, what's everyone doing? What's the plan and how to work well with the neighborhood? Yeah, well, we just want to make sure there's a lot of existing hedges between the two properties. And um, we like them there. It provides privacy. So <laughs> just want to make sure that stays. That's all. Not a problem. Hi, Meryl. Hi, nice to meet you, Joe. We had a nice conversation, but we haven't met. So good to see okay. you. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Um, so if there's no more public comment, I'd like to hear from my board members on Joe's design for the new house. I'm ready. I'm that ready. was Abby, right? Yeah. Go. All right. Um, it's too tall. It's almost 30 feet high. Um, I don't think it needs a roof walk to accentuate that. Um, I on the um, one of the elevations had, is too fenestrated and too varied 
uh, two buried of window. Um, Let's make sure that Joe is aware of which one you're talking about. Is it is it this one, Abby? Well, I don't know. They're flipping around so so much. I I, I no, it's not that one. Okay. But I do like that elevation. I guess it's this one. Um, okay. Oh, the north I, elevation. I see what you're saying. Um, yep. I'd like to see that uh better and balanced the windows are all higgledy piggledy i'd like to see some sort of uh, plan on that um can we scroll to the another elevation like just the one above okay um this elevation i don't have that much concerned about but you can see that i think the roof walk from here just looks a little goofy like a you know and it accentuates the long roof line um and then the next elevation uh this has a more victorian look to it with that sharp gable um and i think the gable to the right feels incomplete to me that it sort of ends at um, the far right, but then, then is cut into the roof. I like the way it's cut into the roof, but it looks unfinished on the far right. Um, so I think that gable is too steep. And again, I think the roof walk doesn't add. And east elevation, please. Um, this one, I don't, I don't have any comments on. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. Um, Diane? Uh, how long is the building? How long is that eave line straight through? Uh, I don't have that information, um, Diane. Okay, so for the record, it is 745 and uh, we had a, a basically a cyber attack onto our Zoom feed. So we had to shut that down. We are now reconvened, albeit with a slightly different board. Um, the board right now at the moment is composed of myself, Ray Pohl, Abby Camp, Stephen Welch, um, uh, Diane Coombs, and Val Oliver. So I would like to continue this HDC meeting um, essentially at items 11 starting at item 11 on under new business which would be val oliver's application at six jefferson avenue and the application is to alter a dormer val of course will be recusing so the board that val will have is myself abby steve and stephen correct oh yeah and, oh, and diane. i'm sorry i missed diane yeah okay all right That's so, nice. let's go Okay, um, <clears throat> I'll wait till you get it. Okay, so it's not actually to alter a dormer, it's alterations and a dormer. Um, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, this house was built in 1983 and then um, lifted in 2003 because of flooding. It's kind of an unusual house. I'm, quite shocked that it was actually ever built in town, but nonetheless it is. And um, they can't expand their footprint because of the wetland issue. So the only thing they can do to grab a little tiny bit more space is to go up in one spot and that's over a bedroom, which is the back wing of this house. Um, and in order to do that, to get the most, space I think we can get I'm suggesting lifting the wall height 30 inches there and creating a salt box effect where you can see I have the dotted lines showing it was just a straight gable but a salt mm -hmm. box is not unusual for this particular house because if you look on the right northwest where there's no change they used a salt box on their stairwell wing um and I'm, at, I'm suggesting adding a dormer on the front and back of that area with a porch, porch roof with a deck cut into it that's shingled so it blends in like the rest of the deck that is there. 
And that is our attempt to grab like about 180 square feet more in this building since everybody's living in it since COVID. Okay. And, and, and I do have pictures to show you where it is. It's at the back of the lot. Um, yes, you can see it for sure. Yeah. Mr. Chair, we do have HSAB comments as well. Yes, go ahead, Holly. So there was comments regarding uh, this structure is kind of already complicated. Um, on the east, with the raised dormer, it seemed unbalanced too much with the third floor dormer. Uh, changes to an existing vertical building. Uh, the flush dormer with the deck facing um, North Beach is, is not appropriate. The double window in the third floor, um, not appropriate. Uh, it's, it's a towering elevation, very visible with third floor balcony. Yep. Okay. I, I would agree with some of that. Um, I would just say the double double hung window is replacing a large half circle window. And we're where we're tucking in this this additive area is in a corner of the building that's already existing. So go. <laughs> Are there existing um, elevations drawn? Well, uh, I have photos of the existing, but basically what you're looking at is existing except for um, where I have it circled. I just wanted to see that when that <clears throat> you just referred to a circular window. I, I, could I, is there a- Oh, so yeah, scroll to the photos and that will help you see. That's what faces the road is, is the, I'm calling it the front Northeast and where, where I'm suggesting adding that double hung window is presently oh, oh, okay. Okay. a I that. Uh, half circle for lack of a better way to describe it. Can we see the uh, photos? Oh yeah, there you are. Yeah. Abby, oh, Val, is the front door, which one is the front door on? Uh, so, you, you, the HSAB is right. I'm surprised this house was ever even approved here or that it's, is it in the old historic district, Holly? No. Hmm. I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think it is either, but nonetheless, I, I will agree with you all the way around. It's unusual as a house, however it exists. And I'm just trying to get a little bit more space in a very unusual house. <laughs> um, so the front door, Diane, is on this facade set back, the, the, the farthest piece back. And if Holly can scroll down again to that elevation, it's a 15 or 12 light door to the, to the right, all the way to the right. That's the front door where it's facing North Beach Street. That's not changing, that's there. That, that's the front door? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Kind of modern, this house. By the way, that the, the volume that that quote unquote front door is in, if you look down below that is the same sort of salt box arrangement that Val is uh, Right. You know, so. Yeah. Um, okay, does everybody get it? Yeah. Uh, comments. I'll go. Okay, thanks, Diane. I have some questions. Over there on the left, the southeast, you yep. have the box, but you have those two dormers. And to me, if I design mine, uh, the dormer on the left, which is the bigger dormer, makes that whole thing to me look crooked. The little dormer on the right doesn't, but the big dormer on the left does to me. And you have that little salt box down there on the Northwest. And this would sort of match it as they, they have so many salt boxes if you look at it. And is on that uh, lower 
salt box with the two windows and then the big wall with no windows. Is that a stairway? Yeah. Okay. Because you have it left on the north southeast, you have that wall with only two windows. And then on the southwest, you have that wall with just one little window. And then on the right, there's that big wall with only two windows. So maybe some other windows could come up. I know that it's, that it's sort of a crazy house to do. Uh, I don't know whether you'd want to make the front door sort of step out at all, but it uh, that's it's, uh, just some seats. Oh, and on the left, the southwest, that window on the, or is it a skylight that's on the uh, That's there. The skylight, yeah. This That's house it. is here, except for the part I'm asking to add. Yeah, that's why I was the other uh, salt box down there on the on the uh, right is fine, but I just I would suggest only having one dormer up there on the on the uh, southeast left. Okay. Uh, one dormer being the one on the back, Diane. The left one, southeast, the one on the right, I would keep. The one on the left, I would take away. Oh, interesting, because I don't think... That's the, the one, one you can't see. see. Yeah, that's the one you can't it see. It isn't a question of can't see that, but you... Uh, oh, you're saying if I stood at the southeast looking at that building, I wouldn't see that one. Is that what you're saying? Correct. Oh, all right. Well... The visibility of this is actually from... Uh, from the front, the one to the right, the you know the northeast elevation is the visibility of this building. Right. Okay. Well, then don't worry about it. Um, Stephen. Uh, sure. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I get the points that have been made. I think net net on the northeast elimination of the half moon is beneficial. I think my concerns are primarily on the Northeast. And uh, Val, what I might suggest is that if you were to, if you look at your left, so the Southeast view, if you were to take back the depth of the uh, deck, the new proposed deck yeah. called railing by a few feet. So you're making it more of a Juliet than a Romeo and a Juliet balcony. It's, it's, <laughs> it's still functional, but it's not as deep. The end, okay. result, the end result would be on the north ele northeast elevation is you would see more roof plane. Mm -hmm. I think yep. if you go back towards it's the It's seven shore, feet now. Do you I want know, it to I be like six? Will, will the applicant please finish? This yeah, is fine. Do I? This is a little. Um, Diane, could you mute, please? I think the idea is that my concern is that it will be more. My suggestion is, is that this would be more successful acknowledging what you're working with if you could show a little more roof both on the northeast side. Um, so by moving that shingle wall back a little bit, yeah, moving it in a little bit so that it aligns with the corner board above on the dormer. So you're showing a little more roof and a little less shingled wall. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what I was trying to suggest. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Abby. Um, <clears throat> I, um, on the uh, southwest and the northeast, uh, that uh, double, that ganged uh, uh, two over two, I think is um, to, to making it more crazy. I think if you put in um, a window that already exists, uh, there's um, several on the southwest just a single in that gable would calm this down a bit um, on those elevations. Um, I actually think the uh, dormers uh, popping out of on either side of the salt box uh, uh, on the uh, southeast, you have a good, uh, actually um, remedies this, this very odd tall salt, salt box shape. So. I'm okay with the added dormers, but the windows 
could couldn't we choose just one size and one two over twos not on the northeast facing on north beach the what is the front the um the windows in those uh balconies that what what kind of windows are those so the they're doors okay and yeah yeah, so maybe that is adding to the confusion. Maybe that could just be a two over two. Or if you wanted, if you had to have the doors, couldn't they be just large, you know, just look more like the the two over two window configuration instead of going to like a 15 light or whatever that is you have there. Well on the northeast on the yep. second level those exist oh so i was just adding the one on the very top to match right. um yeah but they look strange there's something wrong with the drawing like on the far right oh, on that well, same yeah one. the the light configuration is not accurate because it's got like these tiny lights on the top then middle, then long. You know, they're they're, they're not equally spaced, which so, I'm sure is not the case. So the, on on the front still on that northeast facing. Yeah. On the far right, you have one French door on the first floor. Correct. Is that what you're intending for those uh, doors on the second and third floor? Um. <clears throat> Is that the same window that, that- I'm not suggesting changing anything on the second floor at all or the first floor. Mm -hmm. Those are all there in, that, in, in what you're seeing. So maybe the, the pane configuration is drawn wrong, but there are two okay. sets of doors in the main mass. One has grills, one doesn't. Why, why, don't, we, why don't we go to the photograph of the front? Yeah. <clears throat> yes, is you're probably not even going to be able to see the panes from that distance. Um, almost. Okay, so there we are. Yeah, I mean, I, I, well, the front door, the quote unquote front door has a panel over it, so we can't tell what that is. They look like basically 10 light doors. You know, that's what so, I think they are. Yeah, okay. And so that, that's probably what's on those, um, on those deck. Yeah, that's what's existing there on the second floor. And so what what uh, Val is hoping to do is just get another pair of those up on that in that dormer on the third floor. Um, do you have enough to go for revisions? Because maybe, yeah. maybe yeah. you could clean this up a bit and uh, come back. Yeah, and I'll bring closer up or better, better. Yeah, pictures. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That that's my motion. So, uh, that was your motion, Abby. Yes, sir. Okay. So on that motion, Diane. Uh, how about you, Stephen? Neither one of you. Okay. So something's Aye. weird. I. Oh, there's Stephen. Okay. Diane. Diane's muted. Diane, can you unmute, please? Yeah, she's muted. Can you unmute her? No. I'm okay. unmuted. I'm sorry. Yes. There's great confusion. I made, I made a motion for revisions, Diane. Okay. I sorry. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Uh, and Abby, you're in favor of your motion. Yes. And I am too. So that motion carries. Uh, okay. So Val, let's go up to sixteen Tashima. There was just somebody on with my name that wasn't me with an M, a big letter M. Oh, it deleted great. whoever it was. Val, okay. did you send a link to anyone who was going to be speaking? I told them to call to email Kathy. Okay. I just, if you had an applicant who was going to be speaking, that may have been that they clicked on a link with your info. Okay. So Sorry. It just made me nervous. Well, it should make you nervous. Yeah. Um, okay. Actually, you want to know something? I think I admitted that person. 
because I thought that Val, you dropped off for some reason and that you had to get back in. So my bad. Um, okay, so do we have this other application at Tashima up? Yeah. So this is um, a Huntington home. Very basic two story colonial for lack of a better description. Um, I'm providing you with some neighborhood uh, examples of mm. houses that are fairly similar. Okay. And uh, I think that's just about all I can say about it. There's nothing really, you know, extraordinary or outstanding <clears throat> for you to uh, digest. The colors are Quaker gray trim, black windows and doors, okay. black architectural roof. Should we see the other two elevations? Um, I'll go next if you want. Okay, yeah, go ahead, Diane. I think it's very, it's very similar to the other type of houses that are on trash of us. Um, I see nothing to complain about. I think it's a perfectly good, simple house. Okay, thank you, Diane. Abby. Yeah, I, I don't see. Can we scroll scroll up a little bit to the other to the front door? Um, the north. Is it hot? That's the front. Cold. Oh, an odd trim. Is that just the drawing? I guess it is. Yeah, and we, you know, I I thought about that after. We could add more trim around that. Around the front door. Yeah, yeah. a little like, yeah. ta -da, mm -hmm. you know, an entablature or something. Yeah, yeah. something. Um, but the but the but the but the main um, fenestration and everything I think is 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 not is fine. Okay, so just add uh, add a front piece around the front door. Okay, thank you, Abby. How about you, Stephen? Uh, yeah, I agree that it is, <clears throat> it's very similar to what's in the area. The thing that concerns me about all these duplexes is, especially if it's like a four bay or a five bay, is the height because of it's that. It's not a duplex. I'm sorry, uh, I meant modular. Okay. Uh, thank you, Val, for that. No, I appreciate it. Um, is, is the idea that, it, you know, you gain an extra foot between the top of the first floor windows and the sill of the second floor window. Um, so in that area, which I'm pretty familiar with, and thank you for the images, by the way, in a complete application, Miss Oliver. Uh, um, you're welcome. It, <laughs> you can see, sure. if you look at the images where, yeah, where that extra foot doesn't make much of a difference, but with this, it might. So I wonder if there might be some way to do some type of a breakup, uh, that front facade with, I'm not suggesting a full farmer's porch, but maybe just some type of a uh, covered stoop over the front door. Um, other than that, I have no concerns. And I would suggest uh, as a friendly suggestion, knowing the way that this is a kind of a year round community and whatnot. If you give them, if on the west side there, a uh, covered porch comes in a foot or two, they'll have enough room for a driveway to do a tertiary dwelling in the back in the future. Um, those are my comments, Mr. Chair, thank you. Thank you, Stephen. You know, Val, I'm, I'm just noticing here, your first floor ceiling is eight foot six. Yeah. There's some of what Stephen's talking about could be remedied by going with an eight foot ceiling on the first floor. Mm -hmm. That's either up to that, you. Yeah. Either that or I'm trying to read it. The head height of the windows is 610. Yeah. Right? Is that rough or finished, do you know? Usually six ten and a half is a rough number, which yeah, that's what I'm thinking it is. And on the second floor, it's six nine and a quarter. Yeah, so that would be a six eight and a six six height, because uh, you could also raise the windows up, you know, have them be taller than six eight. Uh, but you know, I sort of share that, you know, 
uh, I've said this before, that big space between the sill of the second floor window and the head of the first floor window. Um, what would what would you like to do here? Hold for revisions. For um, that. Well, if you're going, so you're going to bring down the height. I mean. If that's the only thing holding us uh, from an approval, we'll take the first floor height to eight foot. And then the and the and that will will that bring down the height? And what about well, the front it would. door? It would take it. It would take it would drop six inches out of the overall height of the building. Right. And then if we could do a little frontispiece, and with those two things, at least I would be content. Um, do we want to try that? Yeah, I think if you're gonna do as if you're gonna do the front door, maybe that front stoop. Just didn't Stephen say something about? Stephen was hoping for a porch roof over that door. Yeah, a roof or a stoop. I don't know if it needs that. I just, I just, it just needs detail, and and that little step needs uh, something, railings, well, or you know, the way you would see on a home in town. Abby, I was trying to address the difference in the height, that extra foot that the modular has. Yeah. I'm amenable to either having some type of a covered stoop there or lowering the ceiling height on the first floor. Uh, and I think that's, you know, obviously something that could be done through staff. I would go with the lowering the ceiling on the first floor and approving through staff do you want to have a little roof over the front door? No. I don't think we need it, it as long no. as we have a frontispiece there. Yeah, just, yeah. just give it some some presence. Yeah. So beef okay. up the trim around the front door. Yeah, and drop go from eight six to eight feet on the first floor ceiling. Okay. And, and that some railing or something fall. on the, the Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The kids are gonna fall off. So, uh, so that's my be... motion. Um, bring bring the first floor down. Uh, what six inches or yeah, to eight feet. To eight feet and and spruce up the front door. Give it some presence. Yep. And and the stoop itself, so that you've got some welcome steps there or something. And okay. what else? That's it. That's yeah. it. Okay. Okay. So on that motion. Diane. Aye. Thank you, Stephen. Aye. All right, Abby. Aye. Okay, and I'm in favor of that carries. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah, thanks. Um, oh. Let's see. I'm sure we don't have Scots at Gardner, right? We should really look at who's here as opposed to who's not oh. here. Andrew Cotchin is here in case you want to <laughs> yeah. chime in. I'd be happy to go, but I didn't think we I, I didn't think Andrew would speak up, but there he is. Okay. Yeah. I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. Now interest, interestingly, Andrew, uh, before you are four more Val projects. <laughs> I know. I know. No, um, we're actually gonna hold those until Thursday, I think. Okay. Really? It's going to be such a full agenda? Yes, really. yes, really. Please. Yes, really, you're going to hold them? Yep. Okay. Please. So, Pretty please. <laughs> yeah, you're, requ you're requesting it, so I think we have to honor that request. So do we need a motion on that to hold? Um, uh, I'll make one just in case. Yeah, okay. So that would be items... 20 through 23, right? Yep. Until Thursday. Yeah. And that was your motion? Those people aren't here right now. Yeah. So that was your motion, Abby? Aye, uh, yes. Okay, so on that motion, Diane? Aye. Thank you, Stephen? Yeah, yep. Thank you, Abby? Yes. Okay, and I'm in favor. So, all right, workshop APD, you you uh, got your wish. Are you kidding? Wow. Okay, ah, so, this is so, unreal. Yeah, 8 <laughs> Old Westmore Farm Road. 
Yes. Um, okay. So, as you know, you all have had the past few weeks several conversations about the barns moving off this property. Right. Um, and I, I'm not sure, but I think most of you are probably fairly familiar with the site over the years and how there's a tremendous amount of mature vegetation coming around Old Westmore Farm Road there and that you, you currently right now, you can't really see anything of the red barn or the green barn, which is much further right. towards the rear. And the garage was already put on to consent. So the home that we have designed um, sits exactly in the same spot as the, um, as the red barn. And as I heard Linda say earlier, we have literally designed the house around I think nine out of the 10 very mature trees that are there to actually save them. So we're trying to really nestle the house into the, into the existing landscape so that we don't obviously compromise, you know, much of the beautiful vegetation that's been there for years. Um, and the house is, it's a fairly simple modern looking house. It's sort of three boxes stuck together with these breezeways mm -hmm. um, that, you know, certainly have a more modern feel to them, but the elements are, are pretty simple in, in themselves. They're just, you know, I think a lot of the work that we're gonna be coming to with over the next few months is all very much rooted in this simple sort of compilation of boxes together. Um, and if there's any bit of this house that will ultimately be able to be seen from Old Westmore Farm, it will really just be the peaks of the roofs. Um, there's, there's no way that anything on the ground floor is visible at all with the indigenous vegetation that's there. And all of it is really evergreen vegetation as well. There's only a few um, leaf trees on the perimeter. And we're gonna ultimately be even packing in more for privacy for, for the homeowner that, that wants to live here. Um, so th this house certainly you know, breaks a little bit of, of the tradition in that the main entry is, is in the center mass, which is not really the tallest mass, um, but it's flanked by two two story elements on either side that sort of face into this into the existing courtyard that's there. Um, for those that know the property, we're removing the koi pond, we're removing all of that landscaping that exists there. But generally, the entire driveway approach and everything is remaining exactly as it currently is, which is obviously not a public way, but off of Old Westmore Farm Road. Um, that's really you know. That's that's really all I have what, to say. What are, the, I, I, um, what are the colors, Andrew? Um, I believe it's all natural trim with black windows. Okay. Thank you. And then parge parge chimneys. Okay. All right. So just to be clear, the board on this is Abby, Diane, Stephen, Val, and myself. Okay. Board members. I'm not crying. I just put eye drops in. <laughs> uh -uh. <laughs> It'd be okay if you were, Abby. I'd understand. It's fine. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I know you can't see it, but it's such a disconnect for me to anything we've ever seen here. Mm. With the masses on the side of the door, main part of the house being larger, and then these gables with windows that go floor to two, two floor high on mm -hmm. each end so that at night they're like a lantern. I don't know. Yes. I, I, I know we can't see it or at least not right now, but. Um, hey, how about a view? We did view, I think, didn't we? You did view. Uh, I, did. I mean, I mean, Val, I, I did prove, I, did, I stuck to my word on the, on the house on Hinkley that you can't see it from anywhere. Well, you Four can. Four seasons of the year. Yeah, you can. Just a roof peak. Just a roof yeah, peak. Yeah, you can see it. So I I am struggling with approving this based on no visibility just as it is. I, I still think it should have some changes. I, I don't know why it has to be such a departure from what's typical for well, Nantucket. Val, so the, the tall windows you mentioned, and you, you also said the fact that the large two-story masses are, are sort of like on the sides and the entries on the in the lower masses did you say that yeah, yeah. and the the chimneys are ginormous and i just think if yeah yeah that's my comments for now okay thanks stephen 
Yeah, I, I agree with Val's comments. Um, on the other hand, I think if it's if it's not going to be visible, if it's not going to be shedding light at night, um, I might be more open to it, but only subject to one very important contingency that we have never discussed at CHDC, which is, you know, a lot of times we talk about screening and lack of visibility, and then we put in in perpetuity and thereafter and forevermore right. and until the cows come home and whatnot. Um, but we don't have any teeth with that other than litigation. So something like this that's so foreign, um, you know, and I don't pretend to be an attorney, um, I would want to see some type of a, you know, a small surety bond or something uh, that if it were visible at any point that that would be remedied and corrected. Hmm. Interesting. Um, Meaning like a homeowner would have to install plant material to make sure the buffer was no, solid. No, no, he's talking sealed. about a bond. Yeah, I mean, there would be a surety bond that would basically be something that runs in favor of the HTC, the town of Nantucket, indicating, you know, it's it's a nominal cost, um, but it would be, you know, relative to the price of construction in a home like this, and certainly even overall. Uh, but it would be, you know, monies put up to be activated in the event that this became visible, perhaps due to a lack of maintenance. Here. Someone made a change or something like that. Um, I know it's a lot to be digesting, but I do think it's something we should be exploring in the future. And I do want to mention it because this is such a departure from our a typical Nantucket fenestration that I think it's a great opportunity to bring it up. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thanks. That's a very interesting concept. How about you, Diane? Uh what, you want me to say what's inappropriate? Uh, <laughs> well, let me just, uh, the, the windows yes. are too small. The little windows, or oh, they're not small, tall, but they're too narrow, narrow. They should be wider. I don't know what the windows, those 15 huge windows are. I think they're inappropriate. We say, they're not seen. This is a large piece of land that's getting sold off bit by bit. So to predicate our our approval on the fact that you can't see them is sort of questionable to me. The front door is something I've never seen before um, and should be at least somewhat typical. I don't even know what it is. I I don't know. I don't know why somebody comes and does this in a in a property that's old and was surrounded by old well thought out old buildings. But I think the windows are wrong. I think the the windows in the major part of the house are too narrow. The front door needs to be fixed. Um, uh, is that a, supposed to be a bay window on the beside the front door, or just a collection of windows? It's actually it's it's um it's their their uh, casement windows on the front to the left of the front door on the north elevation. Um, can I can I just add that the. The north elevation does not face Old Westmore Farm. This actually faces back towards um, the tennis courts at the Westmore. Like there's, there's really absolutely no way to see this side of the house at all from any public way. Um, the only the only elevation that would potentially have some visibility towards the street is actually the south elevation, which we're not looking at on the screen right now, which is this one. The rear. Yeah, that's where that's, the pool is going to be facing the street. Correct, but I mean, Val, the, the yard is very large there. It's, I mean, it's set back, you know, 200 feet off the street. It's, it, the house is very far back. Um, what are those, it, what are those windows doing? Are they closed? Do they slide? What are sliders. they? They're sliders. They're sliders. The two outside panels slide in towards the middle on those. I would say too that, you know, while, while the, I don't want to speak out of turn. Um, do you want me to say anything? 
I'll wait till everybody's done, I guess. Sorry. Thank you. Um, the windows on the next elevation down that has the chimney, those mold windows on the that <coughs> has separated and not jammed in the middle with all that side. You've got plenty of room to, to separate them and slide them out. I don't know. As you said, it's a sort of weird house. Um, Is that it, Diane? Yeah. Okay. It's heavily fenestrated with wait, one thing I added on those sliding windows, you've got them all across. You got one, two, three, four, and then you've got four mold windows up on the top. I think the sort of chaotic fenestration, if you want to know the term. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Um, so, uh, Andrew, I'm pretty sure that I saw the your other project off of Hinkley Lane. I'm going to go take a picture of that white gable that I saw mm. um, from Hinkley. I Lane. Um, okay. So, and if if you know if we're getting the same thing here, I, I'd have the same objections that everybody. Well, else. this is all. This is natural trim, though. I mean, this is. It's not, there's nothing big and white here. What, what are the chimneys? Parged. Par gray. What? Natural. Uh, concrete, you know, just parged Ooh. gray. Parched okay. concrete block. Okay. Um, well, that's reassuring. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm going to give this another look. Uh, but I, I definitely need a view. I, I didn't go on a view. I'm sorry. I, I went to some, but I didn't get to this one. Okay, so do, do you like, want to hold this for some could potential? I, could I just could I just add a, just a couple more statements before you close it? Yeah, is that all right? Um, I, I would just add while the house definitely appears to have um, some unique features on it, it really just is those three simple gable forms stuck together. It's not trying to be a house busy with a bunch of dormers smashing in and crazy asymmetrical conditions. It's just a gathering of three gable structures, which is a well, pretty uh, okay, sure. But but we we were talking about like the atypical, atypical sliding doors, the atypical huge windows, you know, things yep. like that. So yep, I understand. The, the I understand. atypical, very very large, very prominent chimneys. You know, so there's a there there are elements of simplicity and then there's elements that you know you just don't see at all on nantucket so that's what we're actually talking about I'll make a motion yep. mr chair yes to uh hold for a supplemental view with the uh south elevation slider door penetration staked oh good idea great idea okay um i will I, we will stake it against the existing house because some. This is literally most of it sits. We'll make it clear and we'll send you guys a diagram. Right? Fair. Okay. okay. Exactly. Is there are there any other images that if photos you'd like us to prepare to just help for the if folks don't make it there? Is there anything uh, my you'd like us to do? Are the really large windows and where they are and if they're visible? Uh, at the, that's my only concern, Andrew. Uh, honestly, I, I don't mind the architecture. I, I think it's clean actually, but I, I'm afraid of those windows showing up. Well, and there's a lot that are different sizes that don't, you wonder why one is higher. Oh, yeah. Okay, but so we do have a motion on the table. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so on Stephen's motion, Diane. Uh, aye. Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Stephen. Aye. And I'm in favor. Okay. Um, Mr. Thank Chairman, can I ask one more question? Just how does it work now with the schedule since this is really a new business week and next week is an old business week? Would this just roll right back on the list? For the meeting ask, next ask week. Kathy. Okay, I'll go over to Kathy. She, she, she's the only person that could answer that question. <laughs> no one else can. I'm sure. It's really not funny. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's you guys are doing a great job. I've been listening. Oh, I feel for you like okay. doing God's work here, literally. Oh, my God. All right. So um, now uh, Matt's on, right? Yes. All right. So we're going to go to 73 Baxter. 
Is that new? Uh, yes. Add a window to main house is what I have. Sounds really easy. Easy. No, when you think it's easy, it's not because oh, jinx it, it. it wouldn't, it I would realize, have been on consent. I... Yeah. Okay. What do we got? I hope it's easy. I can start whenever you like, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> so we're adding uh, a single window to the east elevation. That's so it. That's it. Oh, come on. Well, hang on. What does, what does Sconset advisory say? Oh. Mr. Chair, um, no concerns with the window change for the main house. In fact, um, actually, and for the next application as well. Um, and then no concerns with the window. It's a welcome addition. I'll note that, you know, this is a historic um, dwelling um craftsman bungalow and the window is tasteful to the historic dwelling so thank you matt oh wow oh my gosh i, I, I think i must have just died and gone to heaven or something um, I make a motion to approve is submitted okay thank you stephen on stephen's motion diane aye abby aye val aye even aye I'm in favor, motion carries. Okay, there we go, one down. All right. Um, okay, still at 73 Baxter, window changes to auxiliary structure. And we just heard from Sconset Advisory that those were acceptable too, I believe. Uh, yeah. So if I could, Mr. Chair, so after that lengthy process, um, at the end of the day, we've, uh, we're just planning to keep the, the shed. Oh, this is that. Okay. Where it is. And Russell Studio. Yeah. And just uh, replace the door, the fiberglass door. And uh, again, this was a 1940 shed that I think that the board had insisted that it, it remain. Um, and so we were going to retain a, a portion of it. And in the end, it's really not what the client wanted. And so we're just going to keep it where it is and make some fenestration changes to it. <coughs> Did you say this is 10 Beach Street? What? what? <laughs> just joking, Matt. Just joking. That was pretty good. That Come pretty on, good. make a motion. So, Mr. Chair, this yeah. wasn't what was in our packet. Hang yes, on. it was. Holly. This was in the um, Bravo from Sconset Advisory. This is the oh. best proposal I've seen yet. Thank you for the sensitivity to the existing structure, structure and streetscape. Wow. A fantastic changes to retain the historic utilitarian structure. Um, and, and bringing a contemporary use, so thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve. All right, so Abby's put down a motion to approve. On one that thing, motion. one thing can I just ask? Yeah, go ahead, Diane. Why, what is the front door made out of? You mean Matt? the garage door? Yes. That's wood. That's probably gonna be uh, mahogany or fur, but it's wood. Painted. Painted. Okay, That I thought you said some other, Oh, it's replacing a, 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 fiberglass. a fiberglass door, yeah. Okay. It's that Super. Sears and Robux. Yeah. So let's see. Um, Abby, you made the motion on the motion. Diane? Aye. Stephen? Aye. Val? Aye. Abby? Aye. I'm in favor. Motion carries. Okay. Eight North Gully. Hey, Matt. Yes, right. Is this a simple application? I think so, yes. Tell me honestly, because I, I, I need to, uh, I need to. Um, um, sure. Oh. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I think it's, so, it's basically uh, a porch. It's a porch edition. Yeah. Hey, um, Diane, could you share this? Diane? You can. You can? Okay, yes. thanks. I'll be back in five minutes. No, I can. I can. I can. Okay, no, yeah, I'll, I'll be back in five minutes. Thank you. All right. I'll take over for one of your time. Okay, Matt, what were you All saying? Right, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. So this is uh, an existing dwelling. Um, 
And we're just looking to add a porch to it. You can see it on uh, sheet A201, it's uh, drawing three. And uh, uh, just looking to add a-, a On the east porch. elevation? Yeah, and some, you know, some um, French doors there. There's a triple window there now, triple ganged unit. Technically would actually have a little bit less fenestration. The window to wall uh, ratio would uh, decrease, but um, twofold is we want to get a covered entry off that door. And then it's a kind of a great opportunity to get a, uh, um, a second floor um, balcony there. That is the only change, Madam Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I do have sconce advisory comments. Yeah, I was just going to ask you. Um, now, what I'm finding out that this is more of a contemporary structure, is that correct, Matt? Yes. I, yes. Okay, I got like 1976. Um, I've got two different comments. Uh, one, um, somebody who's not in favor of the addition, um, Sconset Advisory Board feels such elevated decks are inappropriate to the character of Codfish Park. It's kind of above. Um, and then another comment was the north roof, or the, excuse me, the, the porch roof on the east elevation is a welcome addition as it reduces the relative vert verticality of the flush dormers that are imposing to the street facade. Balconies facing the street are not appropriate, but if there were one allowed in this location, I'd have a single door to match the single window on the adjacent dormer and the single uh, and shingle the rail. So those are the comments. Were they talking, which elevation were they talking about the north elevation? North. Diane, I can go. I'm ready, okay. Diane. Go on. Um, I, I okay. think uh, I think they're right. I think a balcony is inappropriate, but if they were to shingle this and have a single door, I think it would read as a window. So um, that might solve the problem of that. That problem. Thank you. Okay, what about you, Stephen? Uh, I agree with Abby. I, I'll also comment. I think the height and proportions of this structure are right on for Codfish Park. I know there are changing, but I'm just saying. Thank you. Good note. Hey, Val. I agree with Abs. Uh, would you make the dormer smaller then, Abby? The, the, the window dormer? No, the door dormer to match the window dormer. Yeah. If, if you go to one one door. Well, I don't know. We might want to see it drawn up, but I. Madam, Madam Chair, could I just respond to that quickly? Yep. Yes. This, uh, Val, so that's an existing dormer. Oh. And so we just we're moving. It's a triple window that's there now. Gotcha. So it, I, if we didn't have to, we're trying to, if I didn't have to adjust the size of that dormer, I'd prefer not to. I apologize, Matt. I didn't see that. I, I'm mm -hmm. fine if it's one door. I agree and with that. Through. And the the balcony is fine. Jingled in. Yep. Okay, can I grab a, a motion? <laughs> can I just ask, I, I think if the Scotts advisor is suggesting align the single door with the window below, but could I add a window next to the door on the, just so it doesn't look like an empty wall space on the second floor, you know what I'm saying? Yes, Let's I see, think so. Can we see the elevation? So we keep keep the door on the left, and then make the and then do a window on the right. Is what yeah, you want you won't even see if it's shingled in, right? Right. So then, what's the point of doing it? Maybe you should. I can show. Oh, you can I you grab a? Can, can I just grab a motion? Can I please get a clarification? Yep. Uh, I, I'm sorry. I think I misunderstood. With respect to this, the second floor deck space, um, this was, I thought Abby was saying one door, one basically, and then half the width of this. So it's not really an outdoor space. If that's not the case, that's fine. I just wanna make sure I understand correctly. I, did, I, wasn't, I didn't know about, I didn't, it hadn't even referred to the depth. Um, I oh, just wanted it shingled in. Oh, okay. I was talking about the width, not the depth. 
Okay, so you were just talking about Shing Lin. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I mean, it is a bit of a, right. it's not really a, um, it's not a historic house and it's not, um, it's sort of on that, on that road coming down under the bridge. Uh, yeah. So just go to one door and one window and shingle the rail. Yes, that would be my motion. Who said that? Okay. Very good. <laughs> Stephen. I'm going to know. On Abby. Huh? Val. What would, well, what, well, if, what were you saying, Stephen? I don't want to say make something. Um... No, no, it's fine. I just, I don't think the second floor deck uh, space is appropriate out there. So I was saying um, that, that's what my comment was on. So um, it's fine. I'm going to know. Abby. Well, I, I'm a yes. What about me? I think that's I'm coming to you. Okay. Wow. Um, with all due respect to my colleague, I think there's a lot of decks out there, so I'm okay with the deck. Um, I want to see the video. <laughs> um, I would. Did Abby make a motion? Yeah, yeah. The, the one 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 French door, one window, and the and the deck shingled in. Okay, I. Okay, and I will go I too. So that's three to one, and thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Diane. Um, next up, twenty nine center. I can uh, jump right in if that makes sense, Mr. Chair. Please do. So um, this is a uh, meeting house, uh, 29 Center Street. Um, we had previously approved an addition and renovation of the structure, and uh, we are making some revisions to that, uh, basically kind of pulling the scope back a little bit. Uh, most of the changes really uh, are found on uh, sheet uh, A2, uh, sorry, um, A2.3, which is the north elevation. Uh, it's the portion, and if you recall, we, you know, rebuilt this uh, one-story element, um, uh, added an accessible entrance uh, and porch, and uh, made some minor changes to the um, <clears throat> fenestration on the other por portions of the building, but uh, uh, again, most of this has already been approved. Um, so this is the bigger change here. So we, uh, the previous HTC approval uh, included a, an addition, a, two, a second floor addition, uh, which is here on the previously approved HTC uh, conditions and a, a reconstruction basically of, the, of this back section. Um, <clears throat> We basically are going to, the plan is to retain more of the existing structure. So keep it in its original form intact. Uh, and so we're basically kind of going back to say, listen, we don't want to do this addition off the second floor uh, and basically keep a majority of the building in it's an existing condition intact. <clears throat> so we're kind of pulling back the original scope of the work that uh, the board had approved. Uh, the other portion is uh, on this uh, one story section here, uh, there was an enclosed um, additive mass, single story additive mass, similar in architectural language to the uh, front uh, elevation is. Uh, and so we still are proposing to do a, uh, basically a roof, uh, covered roof, if you will, not an enclosed space, S essentially keep it in the same form that it was approved, uh, same roof line, uh, same plaster locations, uh, but just an open air uh, porch um, with a, a railing. Um, so that is the extent of the changes. One other small change is uh, on the um, this elevation, which is the north. Um, there's an existing 
uh, means of egress that does not meet code. It's got a winder stair. And so we had to add this uh, small uh, you know, stoop and steps down to uh, oh. the grade, primarily for egress. Okay. So. No, so none of the other elevations are relevant? Um, the, the window weird. changes. There's the some south minor elevation changes. is because it's the mirror image. Okay, yeah, all right. There are, there are some minor changes and they're uh, kind of fairly small. There's a connector piece between the uh, this structure uh, and the Roberts house. And, um, you know, some of these stairs uh, got slightly um, elongated, if you will. Uh, again, it's between the two structures. So I don't even know how visible it really is from uh, from the street. So fairly minor, um, fairly minor. Essentially, the game plan here is to uh, try and keep as much of these existing structure uh, in place and kind of dial back some of the more extensive additions that we had approved. Okay. All right. Chair. Oh, right. H sub. Yep. I have H sub. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, um, overall, we appreciate keeping the existing features and windows um, of this 1850 Greek Revival meeting house shops. Um, on the west elevation, can I get to the west elevation for you all? On the west elevation, um, it was improvement east. Um, uh, let's see, south, sorry, <laughs> the north looks better. Um, sorry to see it not have a chimney was a comment that's going to be removed. Um, the overall, um, it's nice that the back is staying and there was a notation that the deck area will be mitigated uh, from view by the uh, Roberts house. Um, and then there was also a question on where are the AC units? Um, <clears throat> they are between the gatehouse and the, um, the meeting house. <clears throat> They're kind of tucked in that area there. And there's actually uh, in the existing uh, units on the upper floors, which are going to be essentially maintained. They're going to be you know, <clears throat> new FF&E and tile and paint, but they actually have a lot of PTAC units, which are the uh, wall units um, that are, you know, visible. They're kind of, I think we've all walked by them a million times, but they're, um, you know, fairly small grills. They're probably about 15 inches tall by about 22 inches wide. And they're, um, they're mounted inside the building. And so those don't require uh, condensers. There's also some utility space um, to the uh, to the rear of the property uh, and behind it. So uh, if we do need any additional condensers uh, as overflow space, we could put it there. Okay. All right. Board members. I'll I'll ask you a question if I might. Uh, sure. Uh, why is this chimney going? Um, it's non-functioning. It's not in great shape. And uh, it's not even uh, inside the. Um, yeah, it's just it's just in poor shape, and it it's not functioning. And it has no connection to any functioning uh, hearth uh, and or uh, vent stack, if you will. What is the year of this building? Uh, I want to say mid nineteenth century, eighteen fifty, I believe, somewhere in that range. Eighteen fifty Greek Revival. Yep. Good. It's good for memory. Well, I, I would say that a house of this age and in the historic district and indeed in a historic house should have a historic chimney. Houses in that era had chimneys. They had no other way of heating their houses. They had chimneys. Um, when you do a house over, if you have to do the chimney over, I figure you know, tough luck, but it, but it makes the building complete. Um, I would like to see it put back on again. Um, doesn't have to be functional, but it but it should should be there. I think. So the other 
thing is removed. I understand. Um, you are making the windows from the existing west elevation. And you're going back to the two over twos. So that is good. That is an improvement over what was there. Um, the double do do doors, the existing front door is a typical front door, right? Atypical or I'm not being it is, it is typical. It's a six panel door. I don't uh, is that I, correct? Zoom in on the uh, existing condition elevation. It, um, I believe it is. I mean, the majority of the time it's open almost year round and they're, um, they have these kind of smaller swinging, uh, they're almost like storm doors. Yeah, it's what you're showing is two doors, not one. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Right. So those are, uh, I don't know, it's gotten more commercial looking than I remember. It. <clears throat> so I, I don't know whether I would like to see the front doors, the two doors, less windows so they don't look like windows. So the whole facade is windows. Uh, I don't know what you have other thoughts about those front doors, but I think that's a, a, a house or a building that goes back to the 1850s that that facade could be adjusted a little bit so it carried the age of the house. That's all. Is that it? With Diane. I mean, those, uh, those two front doors, if I could, Mr. Chair, those are approved as part of the previous approval, but yeah, you know, but open it certainly okay. can look at that. All right. Diane, Diane, may I ask a question to Matt yeah. with uh, Diane's point about the chimney? Uh, is that chimney, Matt, the part of the uh, old restaurant that was in the back? Um. You know, I don't know if it is. I mean, judging on the, the size and the scale of it, it's uh, it's unlikely it was part of any, you know, hood system. Right. Um, but uh, again, it's it's a purely, it's it's not functioning. It has no, serves no function or purpose at this, at this stage, so. It seems more contemporary because um, of a structure of that age would be more internally, not on the exterior like that. So I just right. wanted to notate that. Yeah. Yeah. It's no, small. it could definitely be. I don't think it's this. I don't know if it's necessarily original. I don't know the date of it per se, but uh, it certainly was an existing condition. Again, I would point out that that was approved as uh, to be removed as part of the previous. Uh, Correct. Yes. Um, Val. I think overall the in, the um, the plans as submitted are a, a net improvement. The only little, and it's a, it's not even a really big thing is the little middle hip roof extension that sticks out farther than what was formerly the flat facade. But was that something that was already approved? That was already approved. Okay. You, if you look over then, previously approved it, it's there. Okay, then I'm fine. I, I'm fine with everything. Okay. Uh, Steven? Yeah, uh, West Elevation, I agree with Diane on the doors in that the change of the windows on that elevation make the doors now look like they're windows. Uh, before they were all wide double hungs. Um, I don't hate them. I don't love them, but I don't hate them. I think they're appropriate and approvable, but I do think that the previous wide uh, in the west elevation drawing number three, which is the eighth inch scale, it gave it the building way more character um, on that elevation, the change back to, or the uh, change to a um, open covered porch is fine. And the other, other changes I think are fine. Um, I think the previous approval, I, this is a comment on all the other elevations. I think what the HCC previously approved in June 11th of last year, or yeah, was um, more appropriate than what exists now. But um, 
just in terms of uh, simplicity of massing and whatnot. But um, other than that, no other comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Stephen. Abby. Yeah, I was I was for the chimney, but I'm I'm sort of weakening in the fact that I think it the comments about it being part of a more modern kitchen and being on the outside might be right. So that was my only comment. Okay. Um, yeah, I I just think this is all net benefit, honestly. And I, th I think uh, HSAB said as much, you know, this pairing back and not doing as much at the back. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Motion to approve is submitted. Oh, okay. <laughs> Blue. Um, or, all right. Uh, let's see. Um, on that motion, Val. Aye. Okay. Uh, Diane. No. Okay. Abby. Yes. Okay. Stephen. Aye. Um, and I will be in favor of that motion. So um, motion carries uh, four in favor, one opposed. Did I get that? Yeah, yeah, I did. Four in favor, one opposed. Okay. Uh, what time? It's just, let, let's try and knock off uh, a couple, one or two more. Yes, please. Yeah. Thursday's uh, going to be really long. Lightens our load on, on Thursday. So 47 Milk Street, garage. I can give you a, a brief summary of this, Mr. Chair. Hmm. Um, so we actually were before you earlier, um, maybe about a month and a half ago, about taking this existing structure and moving it to um, the front of the uh, front of the property. I think the site plan might be helpful, Holly, if I could. Uh, there we go, thanks. So so this structure, originally these clients wanted to move this house to the front of the property here and the board approved that. I don't know if you recall, um, it's on Milk Street. There's a little bit of an elevation change and it was set down. Um, they changed their mind and they want to, uh, they're probably gonna renovate or do something with the house in its existing condition for the time being, but their primary need is to as for a garage with um, some bedrooms above it and so uh, they were planning to do that as part of the overall project anyways so um, we I don't think we formally withdraw the previous application we talked to the staff about it but uh, anyways this is for a new structure in that location it's a garage with a uh, studio above it so um, I think we can okay so on this sorry Matt on the site plan mm-hmm Existing building that we were going to move, that's just where it stays right where it is. Yeah, and yeah. your proposed thing is is on the, is that building that's closest to Milk Street Extension there. Proposed yep. garage, correct? Correct. That's what we're reviewing right now. Okay. Correct. Very good. And isn't there a drop in grade like between Milk Street and, and right there? It just sort of goes right down? There is, Mr. Chair, it's about uh, three to three and a half feet. Okay. Uh, you know, Milk Street is yeah. uh, down to the ground. Right. It kind of drops down in the valley and then it kind of goes back up again. And then there's a severe drop in the back of the property. So um, so basically the building uh, sits, like you said, lower. Um, the portion that faces the road is um, the, sorry, the south elevation. Um, and again, that would be about three feet below uh, the grade, but still okay. we try to keep- South it. faces the road. Correct, correct. Okay. And we and have no we... pictures from the road. No. We have pictures of the house that's there and where it's sitting, but we have nothing to give us where, because this is coming now toward the street. Correct. Yeah. You know, I thought, because we had a real serious talk in the office, uh, Val, about the photos. So I was like, make sure we get the photos. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, of the Sorry, house. What, what, what elevation faces uh, Milk Street? Uh, south. The south. Okay. And then the garage doors obviously face inside the building. Um, there's some pretty thick vegetation and a neighbor, you know, dr made neighbor's driveway. So the, uh, the back side of the garage, we don't have any uh, fenestration. We could add windows if, you, if we needed to, but basically try to keep it a fairly simple structure. 
I and, actually went by this today for uh, I, I I didn't know if it was on the view or not, but um and and it, it you know it's you you know where it is. It's it's before the observatory. Um, yes. You you, di you dip down. It dips down and it goes back to the house. I think it's I think it's appropriate. Um, so that 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 that's what I thought when I went over there. Okay. Thanks, uh, Diane. Uh, is this earth that? I'm the sorry, artist? Diane. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I said, is this Ermgard's, I can't think of her last name, who was the great artist, and she lived down there, and you drove down, and the house is quite a good deal off the street? You know, I'm sorry, but I don't know who the previous owner was. Um, oh, well, I do. <laughs> it was a marvelous artist. Oh, nice. No, I think it, it uh, works out. It's what is that clicking? I know it drives me nuts. Not me. Not me. So I, at the moment, I would go along. Diane. Okay. Oh, you just said you'd go along? I said at the moment I go along go along with it. Okay. Thank you. Um Stephen. Uh first and foremost, to the extent it's necessary, I'll apologize. I could use a Snickers right about now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. on this application, Matt, I, I think it's a nice building, uh, appropriately designed. Um for the area, my only concern is its proximity to Milk Street. And I would ask that um, it would be no closer to the street than uh, what this is 47? Yes. So 45. Uh, 45 is not shown there, but it looks like it might be a little closer. Um, if what's the, what is a question for clarification before I finalize that statement? You're going to recess this into the grade. What depth there isn't a cross section of the site? Uh, the lower elevation uh, it plateaus out. It, it goes down about three feet from Milk Street. So the elevation from Milk Street to the uh, to this lower parking area, if you will, is it drops about three feet is where we anticipate oh. we're going to be. The grade then does go back up again where the main house is. So if we're looking at the site plan uh, sheet G one zero. Yep. There's a retaining wall uh, parallel to Milk Street extension. Correct. And top of that versus the uh, uh, the grade height at the proposed garage guest house is approximately three feet. Uh, I th I think that retaining wall is going to be roughly 18 inches tall. Uh, but if you see if you zoom in on that uh, topo, you'll see that I think there's about three three feet of elevation change from Milk Street um to where the parking is intended to be okay so relative to milk street this will be about 21 feet high versus around 24 or something yes yeah. well that yes okay thank you that's helpful information uh, uh thank you mr chair question how far off milk street is it how many feet there's a there's an indication there but i can't read it, it says does it say 10 feet uh, off the... it's a, i think it's uh, closer to 12 well, okay because um I'm I'm looking at a picture of a, a, a picture I took of the the built the uh, main the go driveway going back and there's some vegetation. If you kept that vegetation on Milk Street, and it's 12 feet, you wouldn't see much of this building on Milk Street. And uh, Steve's right. The next door neighbor at 45 has a similar garage um, in front of the house on Milk Street. So with big blue doors just for appropriateness. Okay. Yeah, and just Abby, uh, you're looking at the property line, the distance, that's not where the street is in all likelihood. The street is probably another, you know, five, 10 feet at least further away than the property line. 
uh, the road easement is always wider than the road itself. Okay, uh, let's see, we've heard from everyone. I'm fine with this. I think it's the fact that it's set down, it's low, it's well-designed, um, I'm, I'm fine. So what's the pleasure of the board? I say approve it. Okay, does that mean that you're motioning to approve it? Yes, I will go out on a limb. <laughs> okay, <laughs> live dangerously. Okay, so Abby has gone out on a limb to make a motion to approve this thing. So uh, let's see what people have to say on the motion. Stephen. Yes. Okay, Diane. She's muted. Uh, how about you, Val? I'm fine with it. My only concern was because I, you know, I, this is one of the few ones I didn't view is that it had a proximity to something along the way there that it was in sync with that. So um, the building itself is fine. Okay. So that, that's an I vote? Yeah. Okay. And Diane, are you unmuted? Yep. I. Uh, I. Okay. Uh, and, and that was with keeping the vegetation on Milk Street, by the way. Okay, so I'm, hopefully everybody will be fine with that amended motion. Um, Abby, how are you on your amended motion? I love it. All right, and I'm in favor of your amended motion. So that motion carries unanimously. Um, you have one more 28 Main Street, Sconset. Let's do that. Then I gotta take the dog out for sure. Thank okay. God. We're a little over, but not much. Um, minute spent is a minute saved. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I can jump into it. Yeah, please do. Uh, okay, so this is a renovation. Uh, really addition to an existing structure that's on uh, Main Street in Sconset. Uh, it's a contributing structure that's uh, historically significant. Love the house. Yeah, and um, so our plan here is to uh, really take a generally a hands-off approach to the main body of the house, and even the you know later additions, which are, um, you know, not too, um, they, they were additions, but they weren't they were added not too long after the original structure's uh, construction. Um, you know, our, our goal here is to, you know, restore, or retain as much of uh, the existing fabric as possible. Uh, we're not planning to lift the structure. We are likely going to have to do some, um, you know, maybe some underpinning on the, under the existing uh, historic portion. Uh, there's not much under there. It's a, it's a pier foundation with brick, uh, brick pier foundation. And we're just going to basically address uh, each uh, pier on a case by case basis. But uh, our, again, our plan is not to lift this building. Um, we basically are looking to do an addition off the back of the structure. And we basically studied the original, uh, I would say the kind of second phase addition, if you will, uh, that architectural language and actually uh, use that as our guide to, um, you know, to house this addition, if you will. Uh, probably the most telling, uh, and I'm sure Holly's going to read uh, Historic Structures Advisory Board's comments, mm -hmm. but uh, the rear of the property um, is probably, uh, I'd say sheet uh, A2.2 will be probably the most helpful, um, which uh, there you go. So the, uh, maybe if we scroll, yeah, I guess uh, drawing two is pretty helpful. Uh, the front section of the structure you can see is, uh, again, we tried to uh, re really not touch any portion of this. Um, there is, uh, there, these are two existing uh, bedrooms on the second floor. Um, we were planning to replace the sash, but keep the same style of the window. Again, all the millwork, all the trim, uh, to what extent we retain it, we will retain it. Uh, if it's not retained, it will be, you know, replaced because some of the shutters, some of the detail work is in, in fairly poor shape. And we can provide more documentation to that effect as we go through the construction. But essentially, um, you know, this portion of the house is the new section. And um, again, tried to follow the existing architectural style of this portion of the house. 
so that the edition did not look as if it was this foreign edition or uh, somehow overtake the original NASA structure. Um, try to uh, maintain the same window style, although uh, existing uh, door and window trim details, massing style uh, and trim, trim details. You can see on the front section of the structure, it's a bit more elaborate in terms of its uh, architectural detail. As you work towards the back of the structure, it becomes a bit more utilitarian, simpler, uh, simpler rakes, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So again, we tried to follow suit with that. Clearly on the uh, south elevation, which is the back of the property, which literally faces the, the rear of the property. I don't think that that's visible from any public way. Uh, we do have a decent amount of fenestration, uh, but again, we thought where this is the new addition, um, we could have a little bit more latitude with, with that. Uh, there are a couple of fan windows in the original uh, structure. And so on the back of the structure, we thought that a um, half round would be appropriate. Hmm. So we are planning to add a new foundation under the new addition only. Um, but again, it's new construction, so, so less relevant. Uh, there is a slight cha topographic change from the front of the property towards the back. The grade does drop off slightly. Um, so we did, uh, uh, you know, account for that uh, slightly. You'll see that the rear of the elevation is somewhat elevated off the back of the property. We tried to integrate photographs of the existing structure throughout, but I'm, I'm sure the board has lots of questions. Um, so with that, I look forward to those comments. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thanks, Matt. Uh... Air. Yeah. Yes, Sconset Advisory. So this is the Frederick Mitchell House, circa 1833. Hold your seats, everybody. Very respectful and very appreciative to the sensitivity of this, Matt. Um, wow. The only comment was about those windows on the south, but it was also noted that they are not visible from a public way. So no concerns. Thank you. Thank you. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, thanks, uh, Val. Um, Abby. Oh, actually, that was me. But <laughs> oh, oh, I thought that was Val. No, but <laughs> okay. Maybe killed two birds with one stone. <laughs> okay. So, Val, where are you on this? I I agree. I went out and walked around it today. It's oh. it's a fabulous house. I it love is. the windows that have the three sections. Yeah, triple hung. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, um, Diane. No, I think it's appropriate and and good. Wow. Okay. Great, uh, Stephen. Yeah, I agree with all the comments, with one exception. I think Matt uh, just uh, on the west elevation. It's not a large ask especially with the fan uh, emblem above those casements on the second floor, to have those trimmed out to look like a double hung. Um, I think it's appropriate in, uh, for a variety of reasons, but they can be casements, but they look like the double hung. Do you, do you mean just casing them? Or? No, no, they, basically you, the uh, light pattern would change slightly and you would put oh, it. Oh, 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 instead around. of it being six, have it be eight. Yeah. Are they double hung now? No. Yeah. So basically what's there now is a six light, what's shown as proposed is a six light casement. All I'm suggesting is if they were to go over to um, oh. six over six, Back. look. They, they are double hungs. You know what? They are. Mr. Mr. Chair, could I just respond to this? Because I think I could actually, I just noticed something um, that we probably can actually keep those original windows. And the reason being is we are proposing to add a, uh, a small dormer off the back side of that building, which would facilitate our egress window requirement. And as such, those windows don't need to meet egress and we could just restore the sash. Well, so that, I could remove that would be great. No changes. I, I'm fine either way. It's just if they're casement, I think it would be more more appropriate that they look like double hung. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Well, Matt, what do you say? Can you save them? I think I yeah, I could keep them. I don't need to change. Our plan right, was to so make them casement. That, that I, I think that you're not going to get any argument from anyone on that one. No. So uh, why don't we take take the safe route on this one? So can I have a motion on this? The motion to approve is submitted with uh, with the exception that on the west elevation on the second floor, 
gable, the two casements will remain double hung. Through and that's on the east too, I believe, right? Um, yeah, looks like it. I thought I didn't notice them on the east. They're like four over two. Yeah. Two also. So west and east, right? Correct. Okay. So that's Stephen's motion. On the motion, Diane. Aye. Thank you, Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Ray. Aye. Um, okay, so that motion carries. Thank you. All right, thanks. And with that. Mr. Chair? <laughs> yeah. A quick question. Um, yeah. Before that happened, did. Well, I, I was typing, I was replying to some people on my email, so I don't know what happened, but did you finish 69 and a half, the new dwelling, or did it stop? Oh, I think it oh, stopped. Oh, no, we did. Yeah, it stopped. It stopped. It stopped. Yeah, Joe was left hanging. Absolutely. Oh, well, I, I was talking. I think I think we've got to go back to that and bring it up again. Yeah, we do. So basically what happened is we were supposed to review. Oh, oh, so Matt, um, there you go. You're all set. Um, it, what happened was we we're reviewing the demo move off and then a few people, a few board members said, well, we, we actually really want to see what's happening for the new dwelling. Then we got into a discussion of that, the new dwelling, and that's when all this terrible stuff happened. So we were right in the middle of it. So that's going to have to come up again, obviously. Just both the new dwelling. Well, well, both of them. Both of them. Okay. okay. No action was taken on the okay. demo move off either. So would you like me to move that to, the, to, to Thursday or? Yeah. I mean, okay. in fairness to Joe. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh. Well, what a night. Mm. Yeah. Do you, you think I can make a motion to adjourn? Yeah. Well, I drove all the way to Nantucket to Zoom tonight and what a drag. <laughs> Sorry for you. Uh, well, we're, we're toast. You guys are amazing. I can't Thursday. believe. I can't. It's an unbelievable application. <laughs> okay. So. Um, Kathy, do we need to do any other business stuff to, to move things along? No, unless you want to approve the minutes. Uh, well, we could if everyone's okay with that. I know, Stephen, you, you submitted some revisions, right? They're good, Mr. Chairman. We're good? Okay, so can I have a motion to approve the minutes of September 24th and 29th and the minutes of October 1st, 5th, and 8th? The move for all of them. Go ahead, Diane. Who made that motion? Diane. Diane. Okay, so on Diane's motion, um, Abby. Aye. Val. Aye. Stephen. Aye. Diane. Aye. And I'm in favor, so that motion carries. So there's our minutes. And now I think we can motion to adjourn. Motion. Thanks. Thank Thanks for hanging all. in there, guys. Um, Okay, on the motion, Diane. Aye. Val. Maybe Val's gone already. Uh, Stephen. Aye. Thank you all. Have a great evening. Yeah, thank Bye. you. Too. Uh, and Abby, you're good with your Aye. motion. Oh, yes. Diane, you're good with your motion. Yes. And so am I. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.